Hello. Hello, hello, hello. It's Saturday night Hi. live with Fusha today. Oh, how are you doing today? How are you doing? I got to open up everything. I feel so behind tonight. Oh, no. Do I have it on? Yes, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be doing the same thing in a second <laughs> when I jump off. And I know what I forgot today. Ladies, never forget to lipstick. There you go. Tip number one. And push up. And I'm going to be using you guys as my mirror. There you go. There. Much better. Much better. Much better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're running behind today. Yeah. Everything feels like it's so up in the air. Uh, Shire, we have to ask you first, how are you doing? Last we seen you were streaming in the uh, in the uh, hospital. Uh, how are things? Oh, we got some new channels here tonight. There. You're welcome. No, I don't gleam like a... For everyday dad. Let oh hi hello hello welcome uh, we uh, talked on twitter oh yeah i'm so glad to see you in hi. oh now i see the name in the description okay how are <laughs> you first thing is first we'll uh cody uh, uh, suggested us to check you out yes so i'm gonna put uh, subscribe right away yeah excellent and uh, yeah for those of you who uh don't know uh, well we were mentioning it uh in the streams last week but uh we were supposed to have a little bit uh, a different plan today. Uh, we were going to have uh, Cody Wiener on, famously mm -hmm. featured on Peter McKinnon video. Yes, that's right. Uh, and we're just going to still have him on, but just not today. There was a little change of plans. Life first, work first. Uh, we understand that. So uh, we have uh, a switch of guests tonight. But uh, Cody suggested us to check out uh, your Everyday Dad channel. Uh, so, guys, you check it out. It comes from Cody. Uh, you know it's going to be good. <laughs> and I also have a new face here as well. Jackie Jin, welcome from Northern California. Great to have you. I just want to check your page. I see you're a fan of uh, our guest tonight. So that's excellent. So great to have you. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so our switcheroo of the guests uh, tonight is going to be live with Ken and Jane on uh, yeah. uh, rock and roll and some gold rush to throw with uh, in it. Uh, yeah. Uh, he cool. is cool. uh, for formal member of uh, multiple bands, including The Cult. Oh, Ken is your brother. Well known. Oh, cool. I always know, is that internet brother or real life brother? Because I've fallen down that rabbit hole a couple of times, so I'm just going to double check. Not that either one is bad. Either one counts just as much. I'm just more curious. So continuing I... on on what I was saying about our amazing guest tonight, uh, <laughs> Ken is a formal, um, uh, former. A band member of the cult and some other rock and roll bands from 80s yes uh he still plays music um uh, and uh jane is his other better half yeah uh who helped him to get through to the other side of his life <laughs> so she... to say you're gonna see hear the details and uh now they are out on a six month trip across us Yep. Uh, in their RV. They're uh, so cool. These they guys. are looking for gold and yeah. traveling the states. Mm -hmm. So they are, have acquired nomadic lifestyle. I must say, Jane has had it before already. Yeah. She has traveled extensively across uh, the globe. Well, that's why he says, you know, he can yeah. say about how she changed his life. and all. Yeah. So, so cool. uh, amazing transformation, uh, rock and roll, and gold rush uh, all in it. And he promised to play a song today. Yes. So, uh, so that is going to be awesome as well. Uh, we hope that they can connect today because they are in the RV camp in the yep. middle of the wilderness that just climbed out of yesterday. That's what I want to say. I'm going to jump in for a second. Since you're his brother, I was wondering if maybe you could text him and let him know to uh, jump on Twitter and say hi to us because we've been trying to connect with him. And I forgot to get his cell phone number the other night. So if you could do that, that would be a great, great help. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, I, we tried to get them on uh, uh, to try to do a dry run, but uh, so just fingers crossed everything works. Uh. We have Sugar Bay in t tonight. Welcome, good to have you. 
And I know you know Terrell and I, and right away, I want to say a big hi to you again. And somebody we haven't seen in a while. Now, where did he go? It was Mower Man 82 I seen, and I was wondering if my eyes deceive me or not. It's been a while. I've seen your comment. Oh, you don't do Twitter. That's okay, but maybe you can message him on the cell phone uh, if, if you do. Yeah, if that's possible. Uh, but uh, if not, uh, they said they're going to drop in uh, our uh, chat. So we're just going to patiently mm. wait. Uh, and as we always chat yep. at the beginning anyway. So uh, we'll just wait for them to come on. Domly, we just didn't end panic. Sean, it was so great. Uh, I haven't been here to your chats for a little bit. Xenia catches those ones almost all the time. So it was nice to be in for a while. You guys are so amazing. Such chemistry. Somebody wrote, I forget, they were like the cutest couple on YouTube, and I agree. There's just yeah. something about them. I don't know what it is. You guys just got this. <laughs> it's amazing. I love the way you guys banter to, between each other and stuff like that. And they, It's it's good. You really got a good thing going. Yeah, well, let's see. Uh, let's see who's in. Uh, do my... Oh, there they are. We'll, no, okay, guys, uh, Not we'll bring you in a few minutes, but I'll, I got to send you a new link because that yeah. was the test one. So yeah. I'm going to send it to the same Twitter message, okay? Just stay tuned. In a few minutes, yeah. we're going to uh, send a new link. First things so first. You're yes. <laughs> yeah, we were we were kind of worrying. I, I mean, not for not being on the show, but then we're like, well, they're traveling. They're always going out in the boat. I hope everything is okay. Yeah, we hope that the bear didn't snatch you off or something. Well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I want to start off by thanking you guys. You guys helped us once again. Remember, we were 42 subs at the beginning of February. And a while ago, we hit 1,700. And I wanted to just take a moment to thank you guys once again. These applause are for you guys. Yes, exactly. For all the amazing supporters you yeah. have been. Can't thank you enough. You're absolutely incredible. And, uh, yeah, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Uh, we started this thinking that, you know what? Maybe we'll uh, do okay. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. It's been absolutely phenomenal. And I thank you. For, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Yeah, it's, it, it is amazing, uh, really, just to see that it's been uh, growing. And, of, of course, guys, it's, it's all you. It's all you. So, <laughs> um, and so thank you again. And uh, we must say that uh, uh, shortly or soon, in a following week or so, we're going to have a nice uh, surprise for you guys. Yes. Uh, to celebrate this occasion. That's right. Yeah. A, a very, something very, very special. And uh, I can say very unique. Andrew has been working on uh, for the mm. last uh, couple of weeks. Um, and doing a collab for the first time. Yeah. And I do collab with two amazing YouTubers as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be something very, very special. So I can't wait when they're going to release it, uh, hopefully next week, uh, to celebrate this occasion. And you guys, of course, we're celebrating you with this uh, 1702 <laughs> as of now. So thank you so much. You know, guys, just in the last 90 days, and that's just part of the 90 days that we did over 246,000 watch minutes. Yeah, I know. And and, and yes, yeah. the live streams obviously uh, helping that a lot, but we are enjoying them too, as we always say. It's it's a lot of work since yeah. we are here six days a week, but at the same time, yeah. we do uh, get excited every day when we get uh, new guests every time and get to know you guys uh, so much more closer and get to introduce you with new people around the web. That's so. right. Uh, yeah, that's that's really amazing. So thank you once again from all of, from us to you. So appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, yeah, while we do some uh, ho house cleaning, house yep. cleaning, house cleaning, while we do that, why don't you go over uh, and smash that like button and push that share button. And uh, my favorite sentence of all, if you're too lazy to do that, uh, go over to our Twitter link and reshare. Uh, I just uh, actually posted very late uh, our mm -hmm. poster for today. So why don't you reshare that? Uh, there's a link there as well. And if you're too lazy to do that, that's okay too uh life first as we always say um, so uh, let's see let's uh, actually first let's uh just bring it up guys uh no actually we'll do this and then do the hashtag selfie and then we'll go yeah it. okay so we got let's see we got those we got bottled caps welcome my friend crafty mom 15 so great to have you 
RV Danger Films, excellent channels, amazing to have you. Jackie Jin, once again, great follower of our guest tonight, and hope you enjoy our stream as well. Our guest of honor is Jane, wife and Ken Jane. Laura Wilson, who has been coming now since she found our channel. Yes, Love it's this amazing so to see you guys. Once you come and then you keep coming back afterwards. It's always nice to see. Marianne Donnelly and Panic D. Excellent. Love you guys' stream a while ago. Go Philly, to bed. <laughs> Philly Co Philip Cockram, who's been watching us on two devices. So he's Yes, and it's very nice to see you today yes, after a little break. So we're happy really to be happy to see you today. Yeah, it's, it's really great. What a great night for you to be back. Jair Erickson, I'm sorry, I have to go back and look to see how you're doing. I apologize. We asked, I know, and then I we got all sidetracked. So yeah, she sure had a little uh, health struggles yes. uh, yesterday. She was in the hospital, streaming from the hospital. So all the good thoughts to you. Sugar Bay, so great to have you here. Love seeing you in the channel. And T Throg, of course, who was with us a while ago in the last stream. Yeah, uh, was uh, with us in Panic D stream. Yeah. yeah. Terrell, the original, the one and only, the amazing. Uh, touring taste buds, how are you guys? Are Great you, to have you here. Uh, where are you right now? You are yes. in your tour. Uh, where are you with your stream? <laughs> <laughs> Airstream. Unapologetically, Gones are coming back too once they started yeah. watching us. So that's really awesome as well. You're such an amazing supporter. The and gnomes that know. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, your everyday dad, of yeah, course. That's so I'm cool so excited here. that you decided to come and check us out. Definitely, uh, definitely. Thank you so much. Uh, did we miss anybody? Crafty Mom 15, did you mention? You couldn't resist Ken and Jane. Nobody can resist Ken and Jane. They're absolutely fantastic. They are, I'm going to say, adorable. I know they are in their uh, 60s, I believe, yep. but they are adorable. Like, yep. I, I don't think any age group could ever not like them because they're just they're just so sweet they're just so cute you are right bottle caps it is hot and humid here tonight i yes. just went and took a shower before the show i washed up yeah. we were doing a bunch of stuff today we emptied our daughter's room got rid of all of the stuff you did so well because xenia doesn't like yeah. to get rid of things but i'm very very proud of her very good job uh, i get very emotionally attached to things we talked about that with uh, marianne today too um I get emotionally attached to things that I get a hard time uh, throwing them out. And also growing up in post-Soviet country, we tended to save every little piece of ribbon and, and jar and all that yeah. just in case. Because, you know, you couldn't just go to the store and buy it. It wasn't there at first to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, it didn't have means to have it, right? So I kind of just had that thinking and lifestyle and getting better with Definitely. since being you with are. Andrew. Uh, but sometimes, especially when it comes to kids' things that are from earlier childhood, you know, uh, they might not care even that it's out, but I do. Uh, <laughs> so we did a lot of that today. So, um, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, and then we checked out some streams today. That was nice, too, but it's still hot. I'm not a hoarder, actually. Uh, I'm not a hoarder. Um, I'm very neat, actually, closets. No, no, spaces. that's true. Yeah, yeah, no, no. It's not a, not, not a hoarder, not dirty, nothing like that. She's just very sentimental stuff. Oh. Uh, Sean calls Marianne a hoarder. See, I said that now. I sometimes call you too, but more joke. Well, she got, had to get rid of her uh, rag doll, so to say, mm. uh, that was made for her okay. uh, like 40 years ago because in the flood, it got ruined in their parents' flood last week. Yeah. And she tried to recover it and it didn't work. So she had to get rid of it. And I mean, I, I get it. For it's that, a, yeah, it's no, a, You know, it's an emotional attachment, you know? So, uh, so yeah. Uh, that's what it is. Lash is in. Uh, yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, our here. fellow Montrealer uh, <laughs> suffering from the heat today, too. Monday is going to be worse, so be prepared. <laughs> Michael, we're doing great, Michael. Great to have you here. So happy to have you back. Hope all is well with you. Uh, unapologetically gnomes. I get emotionally attached to, th uh, to uh, things, too, especially my kids' stuff. Wow. Well, yeah. Because it, and it also shows they're growing up too. Exactly, it is a little bit of that. Oh, my little baby is growing up. And uh, yeah, this uh, this year we're gonna uh, send our baby to the camp, uh, to the overnight camp. Yeah. Uh, first time, and uh, I don't know if I'm ready. Are you ready? Not really. Usually, I'm not <laughs> like that. But I've had two boys in the past, and now I got a a girl and that's changed everything i'm sorry if it sounds sexist or whatever but it is what yeah. it is i'm finding it harder 
Yeah, she's yeah. seven and she got a chance to participate in an awesome outdoor um, uh, camp. Um, and it's an overnight camp. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm, I, every time I talk about it, it's a little bit of like, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure. It's I know it'll be a great fun. experience for her. I would never hold her back from it. But yeah, it's going to be. It's going to be different. And you're so right. You can also take a picture of it if it's something you really like. The looks of it and donate the ash of them. Yes, and that's what we're planning to do with their drawings because obviously, I mean, you know, there's so many drawings and can't save all of them. And uh, Andrew had a good idea of going outside. We have a nice field here, a lot of greenery, uh, and uh, take a picture with a child holding their uh, painting or drawing that, uh, that we have saved, you know, during three years. Uh, so we have actually even better combination of the drawing and the child um, yeah. actually i think we should start doing it more as they draw it take a picture so you actually see how they grow with the drawing so that's a good idea bottle caps was asking what the, the temperature here and that so. yeah I, th I think it wasn't too bad today it's just very humid and tomorrow is supposed to rain and monday is going to be plus 38 uh yeah uh, with humidity so monday if i'm here in a puddle in the evening <laughs> Please forgive me because yeah. I don't uh, do well with heat. So. It's going to be. Uh... You can scan the drawings. Hmm, that's a good idea, too. Yeah, the smaller ones, definitely. You the have... big ones, but the big ones are rolls she's got. Yeah, Believe me, it's. And I agree with stuff. the smaller ones. I will yes, scan them. That's a good idea, though, for smaller ones. Yeah. Yeah, I will see humidity 27%. That's, uh, that's good. Here is like sometimes I get to 70s and it's like, oh my, help me. Yeah. Uh, so, but it's, uh, it's fine. You know, I'm just trying to think, well, you know, June is almost done and then July and by the time of end of August, it's, it's kind of already starting to get cooler breeze. So well, that's Montreal that's bottle started. caps. We're just played with humidity. That's our, every place has got their stick and that's ours is the humidity. It's makes it in the winter and the summer, not much harder to, uh, to bear through. Faith in the Fallen, hello, hello, hey. hello, Tube Life. Yes, oh. uh, Tube Life today. Um, yes, that's true. Can you maybe take a picture of it yeah. and make a storybook with your thoughts for the children to read later? Oh, that's such an amazing idea. Laz, you be quiet before you end up getting me a trip to one of those the big printing places and cost me a fortune. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. And I, and I, will, I like the idea of taking a picture of them holding it in the field. So I will do that. Like I said, we got two. It's a very good. Sean, we got two air conditioners sitting in the back. It's just that there is a good breeze that blows through here a lot, and I hate to blow them up. I actually, uh, my downstairs neighbor's moving out, and he asked me if I wanted to buy their uh, portable air conditioner. So I'm like, I'll take a look at it. Tomorrow. Oh, that's good news. Yeah, I know. I, know I, I realized what I was saying that. Yay! I'm going to see what its shape yeah. is like. <laughs> no, the thing is that uh, nights are actually really nice here. And uh, like the evenings and nights. And it's nice to open that window in the evening and have that nice uh, breeze. We have a river flowing right beside us. So at night, you <laughs> get that nice, fresh water breeze. Uh, so wouldn't uh, wouldn't want to stick the air conditioner in it and, and block that off. But uh, if the portable would work, that would be great. So. Uh, go swimming yeah i haven't gotten swimming uh, this year yet so uh looking forward to that uh haven't done that used to do uh that a lot and uh, uh you know in the city they do have beaches here but i don't really like swimming in, in the florence i mean they yeah. say it's okay but <laughs> i haven't tried it and i'm not planning to but who knows <laughs> It's no worse than anywhere else. No, of course. But I guess I'm not really a fan of swimming in, in a river to begin with. It's always somehow scares me. <laughs> even the Cascadia one, we did, like, you know, I have swum there. But even that, I don't know. Lake yeah. Sea. There you go, guys. My passion. Yeah. <laughs> the Baltic. The Baltic the, Sea. The Balsack Sea, as That's I call right. it. Swimming, yeah. swimming in the Balsack. <laughs> I need an air conditioning unit for my garage. <laughs> and one for the backyard, too. For backyard, <laughs> yes, that would be good. Thomas! Hello! That how was are you? the Homestead project. Is it? Hello, hello, on Saturday. I see you got a new video. I went to watch it a while ago, but I didn't have time, unfortunately. You know how things go, but I'm going to try to watch it as soon as we're done the live stream. I have it up in another tab, so. And yeah, uh, by the way, for the new channels that are out there, uh, and for those of you guys who are listening but are not in the chat, hello as well. Uh, thank you for tuning in if you're listening to us on your headphones. 
Uh, by the way, for those of you who don't know, we are uh, getting out uh, podcast versions of our previous live streams uh, sometime during the summer by the a grateful, graceful uh, suggestion of uh, Heroes and Heathens and Juliet Miranda. Yeah. Uh, our podcast guests. Uh, so, but that's during the summer project. Yeah. Uh, so, listen in to us if you if you can't watch us. That's okay too. And for those of you who are new, we're a husband and wife uh, team. We're based in Montreal, in Canada, and during the day we do videos and photography uh, as our business uh, for families, for events, for businesses, uh, promotions. And uh, in the evening, six times a week from Monday to Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern, we do our live streams with guests and Tuesday Tech Talk on Tuesdays. Okay. And of course, you in the chat. And uh, now, are we doing the selfie thing? Oh, jeez, I asked you to be okay. talking so much. Tonight. You're on a roll. I don't, I don't think so much. Okay, while well, our guest is coming in, uh, we are doing our regular Blue Wrench group hashtag selfie. Yeah. Uh, take a selfie of yourself, of, or even better, yourself watching our stream and post it on Twitter. Uh, let uh, us know you. you. Here, let me do that so you Blue can Ranch get the group. phone ready. And from now on, I'm going to be quiet, and uh, you're going to see me more in the chat. I love hearing you talk. I just want to get a window once in a while. Come on, come on. They're going to be on. Okay. We're on. We're going to Euro time now. That's what well, we call it Well, I am from here. Europe, so I can't yeah. guilt me okay. that much. Was it good? Yeah. That's a week. That's a keeper. That's a keeper. So we've sent off the link, and now we're just waiting for them to join us, and we'll uh, start our guest. Uh, start with our guest tonight. So hello, Tom. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Hello. Hi. How are you? So nice to see Good. you. Doing great. So how's everything tonight? Oh, uh, do you guys have uh, the video yeah. running as well? Yeah. Yeah, we're turning it off. Okay. It's perfect. You can pause the video if you want to see the chat, because if you pause the video, the chat will stay. But I'll up. be on the chat, so don't worry about mm -hmm. that, really. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, we were hoping we'd figure everything out. It's been a crazy day here. I mean, it is raining again. Oh, I mean, no. You guys, uh, who okay. was it said they needed an air conditioner for their backyard? I the get garage, that. The garage. Yeah, the garage yeah. in the backyard. Yeah, yeah that's that why we are with Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> I know, ours is go ahead. Oh, no, you guys go ahead. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, we, uh, it was, it gets so hot there. It hit 127 last summer. And I have a pool like 15 feet from the house. And you literally have to wear flip flops. And you, I jump in with them on and get out with them on because your feet will burn. Yep. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's bad. So. So 127, you said? Yep. Yeah, yeah 52 Celsius. <gasps> oh, <laughs> how is it possible? It, it doesn't do that very often, but it does it a couple days a year uh, during July and August. It hits the hits the 120s. Oh my God. Yeah, Death oh. Valley is uh, hotter than that, but we're a little bit. We're like at 700 elevation. I think Death Valley is at a negative elevation, like negative sea level. So they're the hottest place, I think, on the continental U.S. But we're close <laughs> in Havasu. So definitely uh, the plan was to get out of there in the summer. And now that I've retired, we're, we're on our way. Yeah. Now that, do you want, because there's some new people in tonight, and of course, lots of your fans as well. Do you want to start off by just telling people a little bit about yourselves? Like before we even get to the YouTube channel, maybe just back, like, I don't know where you guys were ever. It's kind of an open-ended question where you guys feel like starting. Okay. Basically, um, well, I'm a pharmacist, and Ken used to be a postmaster, rock and roll postmaster. Um, played in bands and all that. I'll let him tell you more about that. Um, but basically, I'm a pharmacist. I worked uh, in retail and nursing home setting for a long time. Um, we decided to start a YouTube channel um, last year sometime, and just for fun, and here we are. We don't know. We still don't, haven't figured out why we started a YouTube channel. Yeah, but, but here we are. Yeah, we like to gold mine in the winter. We have a we belong to a gold mining club in Havasu, and we have a um, 
a site out there where we we keep our fifth wheel year round out there and uh, we spend the winter most of the winter out there we go back and forth from home to our fifth wheel and we do um, gold mining for fun uh, we make about one or two cents an hour mm-hmm. you, uh, <laughs> probably negative actually when you consider all the equipment that you have to buy for it but it's a lot of fun it's really good exercise and um, during the summer since i just retired we're just going to be traveling and getting out of the heat so and uh kind of chronicling our video chronicling our our travels for ourselves our grandkids and we've met just a ton of really really nice people on youtube and i think that's probably our main motivation at this point is just we have met some wonderful people from all over the world and really really loving that isn't that so cool we started at the beginning like around the same time when we got to know each other and that and it was amazing how it branches out, like literally not even like trees, yeah. but like roots, you know, combining, like, especially you guys that travel, you must have already met some, like, are you planning to meet some people that you've talked to on YouTube or got to know on YouTube that, what, during your run? Well, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we have a friend um, with, that we've met, uh, Matt Ralph Wright, who's in Great Britain. Yes. And he is going to come visit us in the fall with his family in Arizona. Yeah. Really? So that's going to be really yeah. fun, you know, having someone come all the way from Great Britain to visit us. And then we're going to show them to the Grand Canyon and, you know, just real fun stuff. And it's it's great for them. They just have to play, pay their flight over. And after that, it's all taken care of. You know, we're going to take care of them. Yeah. Oh, I, I love Matt. Yeah. I actually was trying to get Matt on the channel. But like you said, with the younger kids and that, it's hard with the time difference. Yes. Right. But like I've been a fan of his since the beginning. He does amazing work. He does. He does. He, he does. really does. And, uh, you know, I pushed him a couple times because um, his videos, you know, it's like I say, it's a big kid with a little kid. You know, his two-year-old. You know, it's not a kids' show. It's 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 a it's not a kids' show at all. It's no. just a big kid with a little kid. You know, and I just think he's great. He does some amazing editing, and yes. uh, I've learned a lot just by watching his videos. Honestly, um, not that we're anywhere near his level at this point, but uh, we're you guys are doing quite well. <laughs> you guys are doing really well, and I've seen you guys improve over the last months Thank too. You. Like, Thanks. you know, Dang. yeah. We're having fun. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. it. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. much fun. I mean, your videos are so, yeah. uh, <laughs> I, I'm trying to find a word, like, quirky in a way. Like, there is such a, a nice hint of uh, humor in them all the way through. Yeah. And, and some of them, like the endings, where <laughs> yeah. the one where you were running around <laughs> the pool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ground control, <laughs> control to Major that? Tom. Oh my god! I watched like I watched that video obviously, but I watched that ending probably like ten times. She was just cracking up so bad that she could barely even breathe. I couldn't stop laughing, and I just kept coming back to the beginning of that bit to end. So think, funny! Oh my god! Part of who we are is that we're yeah. not not afraid to make fun of ourselves. We don't take ourselves too seriously, and we just love to laugh and have a good time. Yeah, and share our weird little world with people. So. <laughs> but it's so honest. That's what's nice about your channel. It's yeah. honest. It's not staged. It's not like, oh, let's try this again. It's you can tell that's the way you guys are when the camera goes off or on. It's yeah, you know, you're a lot we of very fun. rare to do a second take of anything. Ever. We just we it's, we just it's almost it. all off the cuff. I mean, every once in a while we'll do a retake of something. Um, but for the most part, it's what you see is what you get. Yeah. So make that eagle fly by here again, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> Those were some amazing shots. That's yeah. that was some some capture. And you gotta get a bigger lens, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Nice. And a tripod. And a tripod to hold it exactly. Yeah, but even before the tripod, just uh, because yeah, you know, just being able to see so up close uh mm -hmm. in the areas that you're going to, it's it's uh, amazing. You, you know that um the one you were talking about, the clip where I'm running around the pool and I'm singing David Bowie's, you know, Major Tom. Yeah. <laughs> and I do it in slow motion. Of course, I was making fun of myself. And the reason for that was is that we had done a video and I know that people were like going, yeah, right. We were out at our camp, which is way, way, way out in the desert. And we're driving in. Jane's driving. And I look over the horizon and I go, God, look, somebody's flying a drone out here. And I went, damn that is a big drone 
and then it just kind of went yeah fast and it was looked like an egg you know what i mean I get my drift we were like what did we just i just looked i looked at jane i says what was that <laughs> and she goes i have no idea well wow. a couple of days later i really saw thought we'd saw a ufo the thing was completely silent by the way and it was right in front of us and and not very high and what it ended up being was we think it was the think. virgin galactic um, yeah doing they did a test flight that day um, um in the area um and we think we saw the it's a glider so yeah, I actually, after I watched that video, I went and, and, and I love researching, right? So I went, I went and double checked out the dates and the places. And yeah, it actually was uh, the, the last uh, gliding test run of it before they did the, the first power run to, uh, since 2014 when it crashed. Wow. Yeah. So you, you, you got to see the, that's the a big, gli that's a gliding nice test run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it, it was kind of. That's why I weren't able to hear anything when you said like it was like a quiet uh, because yeah it yeah. was a wide run yeah. That's I'm pretty sure that was it. I actually just haphazardly saw it. I was reading like the financial news of all things. <laughs> and I saw it there. I'm like, what? The picture of the the Virgin Galactic. I, was, I think that's it. So that's I'm amazing. Sure it was there? Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that's what we saw. That's really. You had to bring it over to me because I won't even look at news. I'm done. Yeah. I quit during the elections. I said I'm done. And I turned the TV off and I unhooked everything and I said, I'm done. I'm out here on my own. Yep. So actually we're a lot happier for it, you know, just like living in our own little world. So well, yeah, that, I love that. Well, you guys are good company for each other, you know. <laughs> you are though. You guys definitely got that certain something that, that not everybody can do what you're doing right now. But you guys got that way to make it work. So thanks. You're doing yeah. something right. Good. Yeah, Thank you. we actually are. And uh, we don't even realize it until we meet other people. And we yeah. go, God, I'm glad I'm not down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no. we, we're, we're having, uh, well, you know, we, never mind. And uh, <laughs> we're having a really good time. And um, yeah, uh, that's where that song came from. Of course, the great and awesome David Bowie wrote it. And I missed him a lot. Yeah. And, uh, he was fabulous. And that song, I, I would love to do that song, but I'm afraid of the copyrights and all of that, you know? And um, always an easy strike. Yeah, I understand completely. It's too yeah. bad it's the way it is, but... But you didn't get the strike when you did that video? No. We kept it under a certain We kept it under 30 of, seconds. Yeah, under 30 no. seconds. Oh, that's why you were counting. Yeah. <laughs> I also played I played it in a different key, and uh, you know, I don't know what key I played it in. I just played it, and it was uh, that's not the same. Good, <laughs> but yeah, we uh, we we had a good time on that video. That was but, fun. But Ken almost never does covers. I mean, that's never. in his career. Basically, he was with bands, but never really did. Never got cover <laughs> band. Always with uh, original music. So. Which is cool. Like, and uh, you're still doing it to this day. Like, some of the stuff you write, not, not, it's nice to watch. Like, one night I caught you were live streaming there when you were writing. Remember, you were just putting out a couple of bars. Um, was it live streaming or, or you recorded yourself? Uh, probably recording just writing? recording myself writing or something. Yeah, and it's like two I months ago. Or doing so. that, but I, who knows what I do, you know? Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> But a lot of the songs and a lot of the things that I put out, all of the music on the background of ours is my guitar. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm not real open to that because I'm, I've only been playing since I was 62. <laughs> I was a singer. <laughs> and I, I'd started when I was 62 years old. The and, guitar, yeah. Yeah, the guitar, you're right. Been singing since... Singing and writing teenager, since I was... Yeah, basically. Very young. Yeah. Well, you know, and you you got talent. You got and then and some great, awesome stories too about opening up for these bands and being on the road and stuff. Yeah, we, like that. Which we want to know more about. Yes, <laughs> you see where I'm going with this, don't you? <laughs> From well, one music man to another. Yes. <laughs> Those were fun days, and yeah. I was uh, single during most of it. <laughs> and um, oh man, we had some great times and. You know, we were told basically, you know, I was a writer and I kept trying to get guitar players to work with me. And most of them would say, no, not unless you're doing the Rolling Stones or somebody like that. Nobody's going to dance. 
Nobody's right. going to want to come see you. And they were basically right. But I said, why would I want to do start me up? You yeah. know, Mick and Keith already did it. Yeah. You know, I, I want I want to do this because it's fun. And, and, you know, and I think I can. I want to do it. I feel it, you know. So I got some guys that uh, thought, <laughs> OK, the heck, we'll go play with them, you know. And uh, time goes goes on. We actually made a uh, this is the clue, not the cult. The clue. C-L-U-E. That's right. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. We made a demo CD. D, uh, excuse me, a demo cassette. Yeah. That's right. We're, we're talking a long time ago now, folks. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> and um, when we got it done, a disc jockey in the local area in Humboldt County, California, said, well, why don't you bring it in? And so we did, of course, you know, we're kind of excited. Think, oh, wow, we're going to get played on the air. I've never been played on the air before. And he played a song and somebody called up and says, play another one. And the next thing I knew, I was driving home from the bass player's house on the freeway. And I hear this song and I'm tapping my foot to it. And I go, who is this? Who is this? God, I, I know this song. Who is it? And suddenly I went, Holy crap, that's me. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh that's my amazing. God. That must be an amazing uh, <laughs> feeling. Freeway and I turned it up to 11. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was really fun. And then we started getting played on the radio a lot. Um, we were getting played quite a bit on the radio every day, two or three times. And, uh, of course, wow. we had a lot of friends that would call in and request, you know, play the clue, play the clue. And then we became – I remember – after that, after that all happened, we we were a small band. I mean, we went and played all night for one drunk Native American screaming, <laughs> play House of the Rising Sun. <laughs> you know, We actually gave in and played House of the Rising Sun. As soon as we were done, he went, play House of the <laughs> Rising Sun. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we were done and we were getting ready to play this uh, club called The Cellar. Right, And it was downstairs and there were a lot of steps to get down into it. And it was one of those dark, dingy places, you know, that we I lived in for years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we stopped and a couple of guys come running over and we're in uh, my truck and they go, hey, can we help you uh, unload? And I was like, wow, you know, sure, <laughs> you know, because the equipment is heavy. And I look and I go, God, what's going on? Is that a fight? Is there a fight going on or something? <laughs> And, you know, there's all these people, you know, stacked up. And I'm going, I asked the guy, I go, what's going on? Is there a fight or something? And he goes, no, they're waiting to see you. You're sold out in there. That's and I unreal. went, what? Yeah, I mean, immediately, I, I couldn't, I really couldn't believe that. I mean, it's like we went from nothing playing for no one in an echoing, hello, 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 to that is so we were sold out and it was unbelievable it was, and it was also strange because a lot of the people knew me and suddenly they're like reaching their hand out going hey ken how you doing boy it's nice to see you know people that usually <laughs> wouldn't even look at me <laughs> and uh, that was a great night man we packed that place i mean they overloaded that place and we started making better money after that and um then you know we we did that small club small medium-sized club circuit for a long time and then boom we got to open up for uh david lindley was the first big band i ever opened up for and he is the um guitar player for jackson brown yeah that's a big name there i mean well respected name on top of that uh, yeah you kid that guy is unbelievable he was a nice guy he was yeah. He was incredible. I thought, oh, God, he's going to kind of snub me. It goes by, and I kind of smile. And I go, he goes, you're the singer, right? And I go, yeah. And he goes, God, great songs. And he shakes my hand. He goes, what gave you the idea to do Sitting in the Park with a One-Eyed Guy? You know, because <laughs> that's the name of one of the songs. And I told him the story, and he's laughing and joking with me. And I'm like, yeah, he's just like a great guy, you know? Um, I found that most of the guys that I played for that were, you know, like people that I idolized, you know, and looked up to like the fabulous Thunderbirds. I got to open up for them twice. So cool. So cool. But those guys party. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's Kim Simmons, who's the harmonica player and the singer, you know, 
in a tough enough. I've got that song ringing through my ears right now yeah. as you're talking about them. Yeah, he's he's great. He's a he's a really decent, great guy. All these people are great people. And the guitar, I mean, the guitarist, say no more. You know, the brother of one of the greatest guitar players. Yes, yeah, Stevie Vaughn. Oh, he's my idol. He's always been my favorite since I was young. I got to meet Richie. Yeah. Oh, he was that... down we go in the back, you know, and they have all this food spread out under these yeah. tents. And I'm down there and I see him and I'm thinking, oh my God, that's Richie Vaughn. You know? <laughs> and uh, it was right after, I believe, Stephen was killed. Oh, and wow. so I didn't dare. I just kind of backed off. But sooner or later, he kind of bumped over and sat down at one of the tables and goes, hey, you know, introduced himself. You know, you guys are really good. I really like your tunes. You know, you writing those yourself. And I'm going, yeah, I says, we're just getting lucky. He says, we're just a we're kind of a big fish in a small pond. And he goes, just gave me some really good compliments and made me feel really good, you know, having guys that are on that level, you know. Well, I have a question for you. I want to ask you about your past. Did you ever play at a place, the Temple R? Temple AR? Not that I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> there were some years there I do not remember. Because we were wondering if you had a, did you guys have a song called Till I'm Feeling Free? Till I'm Feeling Fine? No. No, we don't. Okay. I could make one up. No, we did some research and we found there's a, a the, the clue and it's a it's an old on um, YouTube and old and we thought maybe it was your band. That's why we went slooping. Really? Because I don't know of any other bands named the clue. And we got you know how we got that name? When we went in and talked to that disc jockey, uh -huh. we didn't even have a name. <laughs> you know, we weren't thinking of that. And he goes, So what's your name? And I went, God, we don't have a clue. He goes, Here they are, the clue. And that's the way we got that name. That's one of the biggest things about bands. Yep. Is they argue for weeks, what's going to be the name? Yep. Or it's an afterthought, like you said, in some occasions. Yeah. Just remember when they put a little bit of time. It's either like, sometimes it even broke up bands. Certain members left because of the yes. fight the name. I will not play <laughs> under that name. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not Especially me. <laughs> Especially when the singer wants it to be their name or last name, that tends to be the number yeah, one. Oh name. man, I know three of those guys. <laughs> Every band has to be their name, and it's like now they're well, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get me, I can get in trouble here. <laughs> well, we don't mind a little trouble here, it's good for ratings. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know those guys, and uh, you know, it's they can be the one that did and they can, they can be terrible no yeah. it needs to be my name and you guys <laughs> well you know. you know it's always the bass player goes along with everybody the drummer kind of just hums and haws and it's usually that no offense to you because it's usually the singer and the guitar players that tend to have the most power because they're the most up front that's the most upfront right. personalities not even just what they play but those are the personalities that usually like stand out the most in a band very but, rarely is the bass player the one that's taking everybody by storm the drummer, he's kind of like the invert that, like myself as a drummer, with the cymbals all around so nobody can see you. You know, it's the singer. And you guys do. You guys set the tempo for the show. You're the one that gets the crowd going and that. So, well, yeah. you know, without a good drummer and a bass player, you don't have a band. Oh, definitely. You, you, you have nothing. Yep. And they don't get the credit that they deserve. And I always push those guys. I go, hey, how about that? You know? Yeah. And I always tried to, especially the drummer. He's sitting behind all this stuff. You can see his head. Yeah. If you flipping around, you know, and I make him stand up, you know, and they usually flip me off. You know, <laughs> I don't want to do it anyway. Uh, like I said, the inverts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, you know, they're happy where they are. <laughs> yeah, I'm drinking and snorting coke. Leave me alone. You know. <laughs> but, that's what. Uh, that's what made Rush such a special band because you have actually have a bass player singer. Who's right. actually taking all the attention? It's very rare to think of when you look at all the major bands that that happened. I think being a bass player and a well, after trying to play the guitar, remember '62. I'm now '64, and seeing at the same time and writing it. Um, it's wow, it's no. not easy. Um, it's not easy. But being a bass player and doing it, holy yeah. smoke! That's that's gotta be tough. Unless you're a psycho crazy bass player, some of them can do magic on that, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of psycho crazy people out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are. 
I met a lot of bands that were like on our level. I'm like, oh God, let's not do a gig with them again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, you're out of focus. Yeah, I forgot to turn that off tonight. Our camera automatically goes to autofocus, and then I have to go and shut it off every time. And I forgot to tonight. There we go. We're back. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> no more hate. It's we start talking me. about music. Check my heart. Check my heart. You know? How many of the NAs did you drink? How many NAs? Yeah. <laughs> if I drink 12 of these NAs with a straw, I could get a buzz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I quit oh. drinking 24 years ago, and that's a good thing. <laughs> 24 years ago? Wow. 24. Going on 25. Wow. Yeah, December. Yep, December 6th. December 6th. Yeah, it was a big decision. I did, you know, I realized because I. You know, and my sister's out there somewhere. She can vouch for this. Hi, yeah. Jackie. We love Jackie. She's in one of our videos. Um, oh, and she made a big hit. Everybody keeps asking, where's Jackie? And I'm like, that's just my sister. Get rid of her. <laughs> <laughs> love you, Jackie. Love you very much. She chased me around the house with a butcher knife once. Oh, and, uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there she is. She says, I'm listening. <laughs> She's a great person, you know. We've always Jackie and I are probably the closest ones in the family for me, you know. Jack's always been there, and mm -hmm. uh, and we just love her dearly. So um, I forget where I was at. <laughs> You're talking about the 24 years deciding not to drink, uh, right? Yeah. Well, I I had um, hepatitis C, you know, the liver disease. Wow. I had hepatitis C, and I I didn't know what was going on. I mean, I could go out like with you and. We could have three beers and you had three beers and I had 11. Yeah. It wasn't working its way out. And pretty soon I was in a fight or, or something bad, you know, just bad things. And I went, you know, I'm, I've got to stop. And then I realized, you know, I, I, I didn't think that I was alcoholic. And a lot of people say, well, if you've quit for 24, 25 years, you're not an alcoholic. Oh yeah, that's exactly how people die. You know? No, I am an alcoholic. There's no way yeah. to get around it. I started when I was 12. And um, when I quit, it was hard because I was still playing on stage. Yeah. And, um, you know, quitting drinking and, you know, being on stage. And I realized I had never in my life gone to any kind of a social outing without alcohol. Yeah, Oops. and that was hard, you know. It it's an was. awakening. Oh, I I struggled for three years. I really did. And then one day, I went, "Geez, you know, my life has gotten so much better. I'm doing so much better. I've got good friends. I'm hanging out with great people. Why would I want to do that?" And another thing that happened is, I I, I when I was uh, getting sober. I met a guy and he, he had 20 years and I was like in awe of that. I mean, are you kidding me? This guy, is he, he's a liar, you know, <laughs> you know, he couldn't have done that for 20 years. You know, that's impossible. I mean, and he, right after that, he decided, you know, maybe, maybe I'll try one and nobody will know just to see. And he's dead. He died within three months after that. He drank himself to death. Oh, my God. And, oh my. Yeah, it's uh, it, you don't. Uh, I found out from seeing it many times is you don't start gradually. Well, if I see myself getting in trouble, I'll quit. No, mm -hmm. you pick up right where you left off. You know, right. just you do. When I think of a beer, I don't think of going out and having a beer. I think of a six pack. That's right. It's just uh, got them down. And as fast as why get a six pack? Because you can get a twelve pack and save fifty cents. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but anyway, I didn't mean to bring the whole thing down. No, on no, no. This is the kind of questions exactly. we want to talk about. Please, no. If, if continue. you're okay with that, yeah. Uh, as, as long as you're okay with I it, I think it's a great. No, I'm totally fine with it. I've been talking to alcoholics for twenty years now. After I got five years, I figured I had enough authority there that I could help people. Yeah. And. We've met people on the road traveling around that, yep. you know, come up to me and then asked advice and I got him going on. I've got one guy that writes me. He goes, I got four years now. You know, we met him out in the middle of nowhere in South Dakota. That was the weirdest thing. That, that was. was really? weirdest story. Honestly, um, we were in this really remote kind of campground 
and there to, you know, hang out and fish and whatever. And he normally was not a morning person. He right. gets this urge to get up. Yeah, he was on chemo and he gets this urge to get up and go fishing at like 530 in the morning. That never happens. Huh. Never, never, never happens. And he walks out there and shortly thereafter, he meets this gentleman who turns out to be the man that he's been communicating with for the last four years. Um, they had a really deep, long conversation about uh, drinking, and he helped this guy basically kind of turn his life around. So, yeah. Well, it was, it's one of those things, you know, I mean, you can believe what you want to believe, and I know what I believe, and I didn't believe it until I got sober, but uh, he came walking out there, and you had to walk across these uh, boards that were sitting on 50 gallons. It's a dock. Yeah. yeah, it's a dock, like mm -hmm. a fishing dock for kids and stuff, and I, got, yeah. I was out there at 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. And this old man walked out first, and he says, you mind if I fish here? And I said, oh, heck no. And uh, then his son came walking on, and um, I, could, I looked at him, and right off the bat, I knew, oh, God, this guy's in trouble. And uh, he goes, he, I go, what was he? He goes, oh, thank God, I quit drinking about three days ago. Or otherwise, I'd have just, I feel like I'm still drinking walking on this dock. And I looked at him and go, I don't have that problem. I, I quit drinking so many, well, however many years it was at that time. Right. And he looked at me and he started talking to me. Anyway, we talked and talked. And he said to me, well, I don't want to go do all that kind of stuff to get sober. And I says, I thought you were just talking in your car with your dad that you were looking for someone like me to help you. I have no idea why I said that. His dad rolled his fishing reel in and got up and walked out. Really? And we went on and on. And this guy listened to me close. And I, I was telling him, I said, you need to go home and clean that pigsty up. And you've got to do this and that. I don't know why I was saying all this stuff. Well, the next day, he comes knocking on the door out in the middle of the woods where Jane and I were. And he goes, my dad just wants to know if you're real. <laughs> Honestly, wow. he, thought we were, he thought he was an angel. Honestly, oh my God, oh because my. he was there right after he had a conversation with his dad about cleaning up his life. And there was Ken at five o'clock in the morning who never gets up at five o'clock in the morning, you know, to go fishing. Never, 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 never had this inspiration to do so. And there he was at the right time, at the right place to talk to this man. That's amazing. It was amazing. Wow. I yeah, just want to good. tell that your uh, granddaughter, I guess, is it uh, uh, Skylar and Addie? Yay. Oh, Skylar and Addison! Yeah. <laughs> Those are my kids. Oh, that is so cute. It's, it's raining! It's it, raining! It's raining! It's <laughs> raining! We <laughs> love that. Uh, oh yeah, those are my girls. Yep. And where are they yeah. right now? Um. In Ukiah. Yeah, they're in Ukiah, California. We came through there before we got up here, and we're going to meet back up with them in Lassen. Yeah. They were in National a, Park. They were in a video with us, California yeah. Dreaming. Yes. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was that's, absolutely a lot of fun. They, they were I the ones that danced. That, by the way, I think that's so cool. Those those are memories they'll be able to look at years down the road. They'll be here and he's waiting for them to show their kids and. So well, that's cool. one of the reasons why we do this. You know, Jane and I were talking. Mm -hmm. I'm going, you know something? When I'm dead and gone, and if they ever think of me, they've always got these videos when they're like 45 or 48 to look back on yep. and see Grandpa making a, a fool out of himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's so amazing. I think that's the good part about internet, you know, that yeah. uh, now kids up like in, in 30 years, they're going to have so many things to look back on. I mean, things are going to change. There's going to be different platforms. YouTube will Absolutely. most likely not exist by then, but the files will still be there. And whatever platform they're looking at at that time, whether it's great grandchildren or whatever, they are going to still see you. These are never going to be unwritten. And that's the great part of all yeah. of it. Yeah. And I wish I could see my grandfather. Um, he was a great yeah. man. He upraised me at, at times. And but you know, I think that's a good thing. You know, I think, man, those kids are going to get to. You know, hopefully they'll want to watch it when they're older. You know, and see what we did and follow our trip and basically okay. our life. I mean, we film and we're living out there in the desert. That's just you know us filming what we do out there. You know, it's just goofing around. Yep, yep just goofing around. Yep. But, 
so, yeah. I'm thinking what you were saying because I didn't have any grandfathers growing. Actually, I only had one grandmother. The rest pretty much died when I was young or not before. And my father just retired. He was a salmon guide, fish, uh, a fly fishing guide for over 20 years in eastern How Quebec. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, a lot of fish, fish with Bobby Orr and a lot of big names like that. They all pay to come in because it's, it's uh, salmon only and it's only by fly fi fishing. Wow. And I'm glad my kids get the time with their grandfather that I never got to get. So I'm actually yeah. thinking about we're going to be down there this summer for a little bit. Maybe changing the tables. And this time, I usually don't do bios. I usually do scenery. You guys see a lot of my videos. Maybe this time shooting a bit more about him and kind of going back to where he fishes and bringing my son with us. That's an excellent idea. That's an incredible, incredible idea. Something like that, you know, something different. Absolutely. And you know something, your, your son will never forget that. Yeah. Yes. You know, he and, will never and, forget and that. And not only that, I mean, yeah. not just family, but I know I get a warm spot in my heart watching other families. Yeah. Um, love like the Wyatt Life. They're a tiny little channel, but they're awesome. You know, this man is there taking his three-year-old son fishing. It's just like, you know, it's very touching to watch that. And just even though we don't know your 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 uh dad or your kids or anything like that it's just like you see that connection with people and it's it's mm. just a, it's good content because it's important you know it's, it's it is it's so missing today and it's not stressed enough you know and we live away from them it's about 850 kilometers so about 500 miles yeah Xenia has no more direct family left unfortunately in latvia so it really is their last kick at the can if you will Right. That bond and time in before it's too late. Yep. 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 It is. And a past yeah. class, we all know that. Anything can happen. Yep. I got lucky and connected with my father in my later years. And God, I am so lucky because he, I didn't get that many years with him as, as, <laughs> as buddy. Oh, it was a real rough start. And I didn't get as friends, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and we connected and uh, boy, am I glad we did, you know, and uh, boy, it almost happened to me. You know, my kids almost lost me. Yeah. Uh, boy, it was close. That's... And then that's where Jane came in in my life, you know, and completely saved me. Um, she is brilliant, by the way. Jane is brilliant. I'm just persistent. We, yeah. <laughs> well, persistent is a charm. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I think that's part of with, with Ken's uh, medical, you know, the liver transplant, the liver cancer, all that. Um, that I kind of helped him navigate that and um, get him healthy again, and and uh, it's basically a miracle that he's here. Yeah. And she basically, you know, we met. I wouldn't date her. We we emailed each other for nine months. Hmm. And then she um, she says, I'm coming through town. I'm coming through your town. We lived in different towns. And she goes, I'm going to be in this restaurant. And you'll either be there or we're, we're through. Because she'd asked me out a few times. And I said, no. And she goes, why? You know? I mean, come on. <laughs> it's just you know? a woman. I don't know why either. <laughs> yeah. It's like. Oh, but uh, yeah, I, I met up with her and I knew as soon as I saw, oh, I already knew, you know, I mean, I, she, we became such good friends and that was so important for me because I did not know how to do a relationship. Mm -hmm. Zero. I couldn't know. I, I was in a band, <laughs> you know, it, was, it wasn't good. <laughs> and uh, I tell you, after getting to know Jane, I was like, she was already my best buddy. And then we connected up and we got married in uh, Maui. No, was it Maui? That's why. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, Oahu. That, Oahu. Yeah, mm. I was sick. I almost called our wedding off. The yeah. night before we were going to get married, I said, I'm too sick. I, I can't do it. You know, and she, I saw the look on her face and I went, okay, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, before the transplant. Yeah. It, wow. uh, and not long before we got home from uh, Hawaii and Stanford hospital called me up. It was less than three months. Yeah. yeah and they, half months. Yeah. They said, um, you know what time it is. God, and that just scared the hell out of me because you can't, you can't, uh, balk. You can't even go, well, you know, I'm not sure. Yeah. Cause there's a hundred guys behind you going, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. You know, huh? um, and it only and lasts for so said, long. <laughs> 
I just said, yeah, sure. And my daughters, um, I drove down. I, I could just feel it. It was going to happen. I called up Jane. I says, it's going to happen. It's going to happen tonight, I think, or tomorrow. And I just took off in my car and Jane had to catch up yeah, with me. Before he got the call. And I got down to my girls, you know, Addie and Skylar and Nadia and Dylan and my older girls, you know, Rhea and uh, Ellie. And Rhea and Ellie drove me. Oh, I got down there and I went in to get a sandwich at uh, Safeway. And they called me and they go, where are you? And I went, I'm almost there. And they went, really? And I went, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I've just burnt right into there. The, my, the girls drove me in because I can't drive in a city. I, I just, I, I'm dyslexic. I'm like, no. no. <laughs> I would have probably just have to go, hello, everybody. I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the kids drove me in and saved my butt. And then Jane got there. And then when you're sitting there, you know, that's a big deal. You know, thinking, I wasn't thinking, oh, boy, I'm going to live. I started thinking the reality of it hit you know, what a liver transplant really is. And, uh, but after a few days, I was fine with it. You know, I'm fine and doing well. I didn't do too good for the first four days. I was not me. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's... It's a major, uh, yeah. <laughs> a major operation. I mean, you know... <laughs> so much with it. I mean, uh, when did you start like when you first came out what was it like like after you come out from the operation and all that like what was I going died in your mind? <laughs> I actually died and um I had a dream it's too long to tell but I set up I was down I was down with and it was a really cold room and there was one guy down there and he was dead he was next to me and I just set up I came out of this trance or dream that I was having, which, by the way, was incredible. And I sat up and I looked and there was a kid sitting across from me, kid in his 20s. And he was from Latin America and he was, you know, going to school, learning, you know, paying his way through through college. Mm -hmm. And he was eating a sandwich. And I sat up and I looked him dead in the eyes, scared the crap out of him. You know, he just got up and he came over and he grabbed my hand and he goes, Mr. Hollis, did you know you were dead? And I went, yeah. <laughs> he goes, tell us about it. And I, I did. They weren't supposed to do that, but I did. And they wrote it down. And that's the only reason I can remember things that happened in that dream. Um, it's like having a bad dream. You know, you wake up and you go, oh, my God, that was horrible. And you, oh, you knew. Tell us. No, no, no. We got to yeah, no, hear too. the dream. We got to hear the dream. Sorry. You can't say that and then say you're not going to tell us. <laughs> well, Okay. I, I went in and, you know, they put the thing over and, you know, my, you know, you're going to go to sleep count from 100 to whatever, you know, and I got to maybe 99 <laughs> and I was out Gone. and then suddenly I woke up and I went, Oh, I didn't make it just like that. You know, it, was, it wasn't like, Oh my God, I died. Oh no. What am I going to do? I went, Oh, I didn't make it. And then I had this incredible feeling. Uh, it, it's a feeling that you've never felt and uh, you will someday. Um, it, was, it was beautiful. I, it was like everything was off of my show. I got Kenny. It's hard to even explain. And, you know, people say, when I died, I saw this light and then Jesus came up to me and shook my hand and oh boy, now, that didn't happen. There was nobody there. There was me, and there, and there was this color that I can't really explain that was kind of like a sunset color. Um, and it, it was like if there was cellophane and behind it was this incredible light, except it didn't hurt your eyes to look at. It felt warm. And I know that a lot of thoughts went through my head as I was thinking. I also realized at that time that there is no such thing as small or big you know it's all relevant because the universe is infinite and um you know you can say wow look at how big that planet is and then you go over here to this galaxy and it's it's a speck you know that who knows um just so many things went through that i suddenly started to realize and um then i started thinking of my kids 
I remember that. I wow. started thinking of my kids and I started thinking, oh my God, I screwed up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I wow. wish I would have done this. Why didn't I do that? And, you know, and then next thing I knew, I sat up and I was looking at that kid in the eyes. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was an incredible experience and it was an incredible feeling. I can't, I'm not afraid to die because I, I know where I'm going, you yeah. know? Um, uh it, it was just so uh it's, it's just impossible to explain it's something you you can't experience no, no, no. here you know you can't and uh it was fun um it was fun getting better my son helped me get better i know that at 10 days after the liver transplant my son started walking me around san francisco he's taking me to these beaches and i'm like going are you crazy? I've just had a liver transplant. Yeah, and, like, go, go, and he's like go. pushing me, you know, he pushed me and pushed me. And yeah. we'd wake up and he'd go, you ready to go, dad? And I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> you know, I and get off we'd go. And, you know, I, I did really, I was up and down, you know, I lived off of uh, blood transfusions for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. The medications cause some really bad anemia to the point where it was uh we weren't sure that it was surprising that he was still alive let's put it that way and that was a few years actually after the transplant but yeah that was another challenge so it's amazing yeah. i mean it's an unbelievable feat that it can happen this day and age yeah to be done like that you know it's a it's a new life it's it's an unbelievable experience and then to hear the experience from you i mean this is absolutely uh, phenomenal i don't even know what to say and you're like explaining the dream i knew everybody was burning to know what that dream was they all started thanking <laughs> as soon as you started telling it so i'm glad you well, did it. it was it was an experience that i really can't explain but don't be afraid of it because when you will know exactly where you're at and what you're doing mm. and uh and and you're great with it it was like i don't want to go anywhere but i just woke up you know i just i was thinking of my kids really hard and then i started this guilt thing of oh man i should have done more i should have done this you know nobody dies and say man i wish i had worked some over, more overtime you know you've yeah. heard that before yeah. man that's why we're doing this you know um I'm not, I, you know, it's, it's, um, every time something happens, we had so much bad luck, luck last summer. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I mean, seriously, yeah. we, we bought a brand new RV and it completely started on fire the second day and it just, the slot broke. Yeah, the, it, was it was horrible. Really and this company <laughs> wouldn't back themselves up and it was getting yeah. ugly and I was getting upset. And then, yeah. you know, you sit back and you go, wait a second, I'm supposed to, I would have been dead, mm -hmm. you know? There's so many times that I I, I get that. It helps you put things in perspective, you yeah. know? Of yeah. Stuff happens, but, you know, you, you, you look at the big picture and, you know, our house flooded, the RV broke down literally in, you know, within a few months, I, 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 I totaled a car. Um, these three big things happened within just a few months of each other. And it was sort of like, okay, what's happening? And when you look at the big picture, it's like, wow, that's, those are not really big problems to have. Those are like, that's a, it's a good problem to have. If you think about some of the things that people are going through in other parts of the world, it's like, we're lucky. Oh my God, are we lucky. Problems. Exactly. You know? we're lucky 100%. It's hard to see, but you know, and as we get older and we go through life experiences, our perspective you know if you look back to our teen years or we hear our teen kids talk or whatever now and i mean you feel bad for them you know it means a lot to them but then you walk away it's like you have that moment since you're having a bad day it's like god i wish i could deal with those problems for a day again you know yeah yeah exactly things get harder you learn what's really important and we're all guilty we all say that today but we do have our days where we just get down on our luck yep. that's yep. part of being human look at it every time somebody dies we always say the same thing oh i'm gonna live my life better now oh, i'm gonna do we do and we don't, you know, and I'm not going to stress anything, but it's part of caring is stressing over things that come up day to day, but it's not letting them dominate your life and realizing that you say that we have small problems compared to other people. Yep. 
right? Jane's always telling me, this is a good problem to have. Yeah. And it yeah. always puts me in, she, she keeps me going, you know, um, and wakes me up when I, you know, I actually don't though. I, I, I had a house burned down and um, it was right after I lost everything. And then I got into another home and I was fixing it up and I got it all set up and the insurance at that time in California, they weren't doing, there was a big thing about earthquake insurance and only one insurance company was handling it and they would just then, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> they took me for a lot of money and but I had to, to get into the home and my house burnt down within 10 months. Wow. And then the guys that were that were the adjusters that came out that are usually out there to to screw you out of everything. Yeah. They came out and they found my music and some other things and they were very kind to him. The, let's yeah, let's let's, let's just say let's yeah. keep it to there. Yeah. They were very, very kind they were generous. to me. Yeah. And I, I guys guys, we're having trouble hearing you yeah. you're breaking up really badly okay oh now we can hear you again you okay okay good all right yeah. so yeah. Yeah, after all Do this you want us to speak slowly? <laughs> oh, you were you had real robot voice going for a minute. That's why we had to yeah. sketch it. Um, yeah, so after all this stuff happened, you know, me totaling a car and um, the RV being a complete lemon and um, the house flooding and keeping us out of our house for five months, you know, um, we were we got pretty down, but um, we we kind of kept saying to each other at different times, kind of helping bring each other up that in the end, things were going to work out the best and they really have. And we, we couldn't see that always at the time, but you know, our house is worth more now than it was. We have a brand new kitchen. We have brand new tile floors. Um, you know, everything was repainted and we didn't lose any of the contents of our house. You know, there was mold growing in one small area in the kitchen, but, um, it could have been way, way worse. And um, we ended up with basically a new house Do we get to do after it? everything happened. Is, so. it, is it coming through okay now? It's okay uh, now, yeah. Yeah, your picture was uh, okay. like you were getting like the frames are freezing. That's why. Uh, just going <laughs> to. <laughs> You're getting there. Yeah, it's coming back. If it, if it keeps going on, then maybe we'll just get you to disconnect and reconnect. And that usually gets okay. you back on. Yeah. So. Oh, we got to do that again. Uh -oh. <laughs> so for you, it's coming back though. It's coming back some. So. Okay. <laughs> you know, we're not running off of uh, this this RV camps. Their Wi-Fi. They say they have Wi-Fi. It's not Wi-Fi. It's basically just check email, whatever. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty standard. But yeah. what what did you guys connect with the other night when we first tried? Was it the RV? What the the, the park? Ours. It was uh, yours. We have a we have a one of those extended data plans. The unlimited data, yeah. But oh. they, they they buffer you or they what are they uh, slow you down after twenty two gigs? So yeah, that's probably what happened because you've been on for a while. That's why I was thinking if we do have a lot of trouble, we'll get okay. you just log off and click the link again because then it will restart you because they're probably buffered. You can do that. Yeah, if you need us to. No, it's going good now. It's, it's coming good back. now, yep. just in case. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good. Are we doing okay? Did we pass the yep, test? we passed our test. We did? Oh, oh good. Yep. Now we're going to move on to Jane for a few minutes, and we're going to turn the clock uh -oh. back as far as Jane wants to go back. Okay. And we want to learn a little bit about Jane. Whatever you feel, wherever, whatever point, it could be from a toddler to teenager, whatever you feel like starting from, and just kind of let us know, like, tell us a little bit more about you. Wow. Um, Where you grew up? Or... No, I guess um, this is kind of a weird question because – I'm such a private person and you wouldn't think that being on YouTube, it's like, Hey, here's my life. Um, but, uh, he dragged me along. <laughs> <laughs> so here I am. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Only what you feel like sharing. I can't stress. Yeah, enough. No, it's fine. Um, uh, you know, I, it's, I, I just always had a passion for, for travel and, um, adventure and, uh, from the very beginning, I mean, the very beginning, I've always remembered uh, just one of my first wishes was to go every place there was to go, to see every country that there was to see, 
to walk every land that there was to walk. And um, I guess this for me is kind of a dream come true, you know, our, our travels and adventure. Basically, I know that's the world is too big to do that, <laughs> but um, I'm going to oh. see what I can see before I, you know, leave this world. Did you grow uh, up in a smaller town or were you like more like more rural or urban? Would... Suburban, Northern California, <laughs> suburban. Yeah. Yeah. And you were thinking about it even when you were young, you were all, because you sound a lot like I did. That's why I was curious. I was like that. Yeah, that's just, I've always had a passion to do that. And I think, um, you know, my mom used to take us out on trips, um, day trips all over Northern California and um, as far as we could go in a day and a half or two days. And um, we'd learn about the history. You know, we'd stop at all those little historical markers on the side of the road and read them. And, and uh, she would tell us, you know, history class is going to be so much more interesting when you remember that you were here and you saw what it was like. And um, for me, that just, that, I guess that was the start of wanting to, you know, travel and have adventures. So um, were you a big family or? No, no, just me and my brother, my mom, my dad, that was it, you know, pretty much just a small family. And so pharmacist, so that was that something else you dreamt of since you were young? Or no. Was... <laughs> it's a good way to pay the bills. Um, <laughs> yeah, it That's was a good answer. way to pay the bills. Um, you know, I think that was one of the things that my mom instilled in me was you need to be able to take care of yourself. Yeah. And no matter what, um, to be able to provide for yourself, no matter what. And that's part of why I chose the profession. I really do. I really did enjoy my career. But I was also really happy to get out, considering um, everything that's going on with the, the war on opioids and, and whatnot. It was just getting really, really ugly. So yeah. it, was, it was time to go. <laughs> yeah. So, um, But it was really, I do miss um, counseling people on over-the-counter medications and, you know, just people asking me the questions that they have and that they were really super accessible as a profession. Yeah, um, yeah versus you know doctors that you can't even get through to you mm -hmm. can just walk up to a pharmacy and talk to the pharmacist you know and we're there um so i really enjoyed that aspect of it um but i'm also really glad to be out of it just because of everything that's going on in the country right now so it's too bad that's ha it's happening the way it is but i yes. understand your point and pharmacists get forgotten a lot in that whole that whole war on, you know, on the op opioids and that. I mean, we talk about pharmacies and talk, but we forget there's actual people like yourself that have to deal with that, you know, on many times, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, people getting yeah. irate, threatening and all that. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it makes you, I mean, it, it definitely makes you a little jaded. Yes. And I've never really wanted to be a jaded person or mis mistrust people. Mm -hmm. But um, unfortunately, with the whole thing, I mean, there were many, many times that I was lied to about, oh, my, my, I dropped it in the sink. Oh, I, you know, my friend stole it or I left it in a hotel or whatever. And it's like, I'm just, I had enough. <laughs> of course. So, yeah. Yeah. Here they are so strict, like, uh, um, you know, even on, on like things like Ritalin and things like that, that are not opioids, you know, and more for focusing and they don't give you spills in advance. Like, unless it's like, two days you know right uh yeah. no come like, down to that and it's like well we're leaving for travel well yeah. <laughs> you know and it's uh, they're very strict here even on things that are not like narcotics or anything like yeah. that even on the regular types unfortunately of yeah we have to be i mean it's you know and then at the same time it's like um as a pharmacist um i would also be compassionate if i had somebody that that came to me and said hey you know, talk to me, I'm, you're traveling, I would make, I would make exceptions for people. I mean, we're not, you know, just. Yeah. Uh, not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, See, the, but, the hard part right now is because uh, if, unless you have a group plan, like in Red Province, like states are different in Quebec, drugs are 100% free until the age of 18, or if you go to school, 25, like it's because universal mm -hmm. health care. But with that, if your child needs Ritalin or anything like that, you actually have to have a code opened by the doctor that goes to the government before they can allow that drug to be issued to you. Yeah. So you have to practice any doctor can do it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's part of why I was glad to get out as well as um, and why I got out of nursing home practice because I saw, at least in the States, um, the government basically was telling 
people um, how they how the doctors could prescribe, mm-hmm. telling patients, "No, you can't take this." Yeah, I felt that that was wrong. I have a very libertarian approach to yeah. to you know medicines, yeah. and um, so just glad to be out of it. <laughs> Don't talk about Peru and stuff. That, oh yeah, that yeah, was so awesome. Um, well. I mean, there's not a lot to tell other than um, I just kind of, it was another one of those spur of the moment type of things. Um, I saw the ad for um, a trip to Peru. I was in my early 20s and it was uh, basically an extension course at the University of California, Davis. And um, I said, oh, I'd really like to go on that. My mom said, sure. I'll pay for it. I went, yes, I'm going. <laughs> and I wanted a car, by the way. Sure to get some of <laughs> so I think that was, that was one of the things that was really great was um, she was very, you know, encouraged me that way to really expand my horizons. And um, I didn't know a soul, um, but I just went on there and made some great friends and, um, you know, learned a lot about the geology of the area. And we went through and did a hike, uh, not a hike, but a trek. Um, with backpacks and all that for about, I think it was five or six days. I was in my early twenties, so that was it's been quite a while. But oh, it was. Cool. Um, what do you think of the um, landscape and the people and stuff like that? It was amazing. It was yeah. amazing. Um, some of the we went we went to Machu Picchu. Um, honestly, there was another town, and I can't recall the name that kind of impressed me even more because there were people still living there the same way that they had centuries ago oh that's so and cool that was just it was just it brings you to i guess a different it's hard to explain a different perspective on life you just oh. don't even think that people are still living that way unless you experience it and firsthand and it was it was amazing um they talked about some of the stones that were created to to make these um cities on hillsides and they were huge kind of like the pyramids type situation you're like how did they get them here well we don't know (laughs) it was just it was mind-blowing to actually be there you're there and you're touch. i mean it's living history right in front of you and it's so it's almost like trying to figure out the beginning of the universe it's hard to wrap your head around when you see something like that how they did it how is this even possible i can't believe somebody thousands of years ago touched what i'm touching right now Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. That, uh, now, you, now you're blowing my mind. That always happens to me. <laughs> you Native that. American stuff blows yeah. my mind. Yeah. You know. But well, so yeah. Much history. Exactly. I mean, you know, we talk about North America, and everybody says, "Oh, well, it's a new country." You know, like where we live is some of the oldest towns in North America, Montreal, Quebec City's place. And they're like, "Oh, it's only 400 years old." We always forget. Guess what? There was Native Americans that lived here long before right. we showed up. You know. Right. Exactly. There is thousands of years of history here. Yeah, of course. It just gets sidetracked all the time. I think that's part of what I like about um, some of the YouTube friends I've met as well, is that yeah. I see some of the cities, um, the tours that they take you on. Yes. Rip out. The town yeah. that we live in was founded in the 60s. You know, it's like that's so new. Exactly. But, um, to, to walk, you know, through um, Krakow, Poland, Krakow and uh, yeah. Warsaw, Poland and uh, Berlin and just is this like wow, all that history, you know. I even do that when I'm on the East Coast. <laughs> it's like because it's so much older than the West. I was but, in uh, Krakow, Poland the other year, and it was fantastic. That's where I went when I went to Auschwitz because you always go there and then go the next day. Yeah. And uh, the city's fantastic. Like that's Pope John Paul II Airport. It's named after him, big statue when you come uh-huh. in. It's dirt cheap. Oh my God Almighty! You want to feel it- like a millionaire? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I always judge every city. No, before it freaks me, I don't need a McDonald's everywhere I go. I use it for Wi-Fi, though. Right, right, right. And I always look at the prices because there's where you engage the economy. And there it would cost like, I don't know, let's say two bucks for a Big Mac trio. Yeah. And then when I got to Switzerland, like that's in Canadian dollars. When I got to Switzerland, it was $26 or $26. Ah! <laughs> for McDonald's. That's in, in Denmark, I kid you not, we had the kids that you're flying, and it's in an airport, but in Denmark for a uh, Whopper Trio was $51 Canadian. Oh, my gosh. 
And yeah. we never had it. I can no. guarantee you we never had it. $51. Yeah. Yep. So that would be what, about 40, what, 40? Did the clown dollars? serve you the food? Oh, <laughs> you should be putting it down my throat like feeding like a feeding a bird, you know? <laughs> God. Yeah, I had a bit of a coronary. I'm not the biggest. But it is fan. a good. It's a good perspective on like how much the dollar or how much. The yes. Yeah. yeah. That's why I always use them. I always say if you're traveling, you got a day in a place. Try to hit a McDonald's and a grocery store, and you'll know a ton of things about that city or that country. Yeah. 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 In a nutshell. Yep. Because yep. you stay away from the tourist spots and just go off three streets. You'll always find a little grocery store. You'll see yep. what they usually eat in that area. You'll see what their cost of living is and the local mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Right. I've only been out of the United States once, and that was 40 years ago, and I went to Nogales, Mexico, and I was just there for a little while and almost got thrown in jail and left. <laughs> that like time I could see you in Mexico, I'm sure it was a, a, it was something else. I'm sure about that. I was done. I said, I, I think I'll get out of here, <laughs> you know. You um, know who you remind me of? I have to tell you. You remind me. You remind me of Sammy Hagar. <laughs> I've been thinking that for the last 20 minutes. You're I'm telling the story in that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what you remind me of. Somebody told me Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent, right. You know. Oh, Ted Nugent. Yeah. I could see uh, some Ted Nugent. Uh, yeah. yeah, Sammy Hagar can't drive 55. These guys, yeah, I'd like to have met him, but. Uh... Yeah, I had I had seen him. I, he was a real gentleman. I mean, I liked, I know everybody fights over Roth or. Sammy Hagar. I like both of them for different reasons. Yeah. But I found Sammy was just a bit more humanized. Like poor Eddie. I wanted to meet him when I was in the music business. And that was the one thing that my manager had a heart to heart with me. And he's like, listen, I know you really love him. And you might run into the NAM show by some chance. He goes, if you really love him, I wouldn't advise meeting him. He said he's a really mean person. Oh. And he was saying it so generally from the heart, like he didn't want me to be crushed because that was my goal, my whole career was to meet Eddie Van Halen. And he's like, oh no. He said, We've met him before. It's not a nice experience. You'll really I guess he's really rude to everybody. Um he's cut off. He's kind of like a bit like what Michael Jackson was. He has no connection to like dealing with regular people. He doesn't know what yeah. to say. It's very awkward. He gets very angry easily. So he said, if you like him, just keep it in the music and you know. Yeah. So yeah. I would have still met him if I had the chance. I would have snuck it out, but yeah, I appreciate it. It's the talk. So the guy can play a guitar. Well, I mean, he's everybody we've listened to since 1977. Pretty much has been influenced by him in one shape or another. Right. You know, yeah. even country today, like Zenny was, that grew up in Europe, and when we lived in Saskatchewan, which is northern North Dakota, she kind of got a hankering for country music. I listened to yeah. when I was younger the older stuff. My dad was a bluegrass guy, and yeah. That. So I kind of turned against it a bit and didn't want to hear any. But I started listening to the new music, and I'm like, don't if anybody ever listens to new country and comes to me and they say they hate rock from the 80s, I'm going to punch their lights out. Because when I listen to it, all I hear is Bon Jovi. I hear Def Leppard. I hear Cinderella. That's not country anymore. I mean, it's just no, it's turned down the distortion a little bit. It's the same yeah. music from the 80s. Yep. Yeah. I you mean, know? the Eagles would have been definitely country, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. But uh, Credence, uh, wow. you know. So many bands, you know. And I remember telling everybody when Credence came out, it says, you guys really need to listen to this because this, these guys are going to make a whole new wave of a country sound in rock and roll. And they did. I mean, I mean, they didn't make it themselves, but they were one of the first ones, you know. Fogarty was a genius. Oh, yeah. So far ahead of his time. I mean, uh, Move Mountains, that guy. Yes. It was so experimental back then. Even at, like even bands like the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band and that, you know, they had rock, they had country, they had blue, everything. It was that folk was coming through it. Gordon Lightfoot and all those guys were all kind of all collaborating all the time. And, and there are some yeah. memories of uh, people meeting uh, people, oh. people. Sammy Hager, uh, athlete Tahoe, Laura Wilson was hanging out with. Oh, wow. And uh, down the rabbit hole was uh, the Watch Watchmen were her favorite band. And they bought her beer and played pool with her when she was How a bar. Fun. Great. All right. Yeah. That's and so cool. uh, David Asher was really cool, too. So, yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> Well, like Drake, uh, the big rap star. I mean, I remember him. He was on the Canadian show Degrassi. I was a product advisor there. I, he was playing a kid in a wheelchair. I mean, he was popular. That show was big in the States, but he still didn't 
it was right before all the the, the, the the his career took off and became like one of the biggest things in the world. I didn't even realize it was the same kid. I heard them talking at work about this Drake guy, and then they're like, "Yeah, well, you know." <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I didn't even know he was Canadian. I thought it was some kid, you know, from LA or somewhere like that. They're like, "Well, no, he's a kid on Degrassi." I'm like, "You're kidding me." <laughs> my niece at the time, because I grew up in a rural area for my first marriage, and I know what it's like to grow up in a rural area. You never get to see shows. You never get all these things. Mm -hmm. So I was setting up for the products for that year, and I said, I never asked for anything, but I said, I'm going to ask you for one thing. I want you to get me a poster signed by the whole cast. And he went around for three weeks, so now she got this poster and Drake's signatures on it. So I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably worth a good, maybe a good amount today. Yeah, yeah. You I've know what? Clarice was trying to get well soon card for me when I had a liver transplant. What? Clint Eastwood signed, uh, and, and who else was that? Uh, the, uh, that old, uh, oh, I can't think of her name right now. Anyway, Clint Eastwood signed a get well card for me, and my son got it for me. My son was working on a set for a movie, and Clint was backing it, and he, my son went up to the house. And, and said, hey, would you sign this for my dad? He really likes you. And he was He's like more than yeah. happy. To... And he was in the hospital at the yeah. time. He's like, they oh, can't get God. better, I'm, you know. Yeah. yeah. And a few other big movie stars, too. I can't think of her I name. I can't remember her name. She feeds her dog bottled water, though. I yeah. remember that, that story. I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. That's that's incredible. <laughs> what a... Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. Willie Nelson really nice, too, though. Out one night, too. That was fun. He oh. was a really right on guy. That is unbelievable. I'm just, I'm, I, I'm speechless. What a great way to get better than have a card from Clint Eastwood. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of cool. Well, my son, it was, I was really sick, and my son goes, Hey, I got a card. And guess who signed it? And I'm like, I don't care. And he goes, Clint Eastwood. And I was like, oh, I care. Really? Yeah, that, it was great. I, you know, I keep that under lock and key and i'm actually going to frame that you know because yeah. it has marlene dietrich was it no, no 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 it wasn't her mm -mm. i i can't believe you don't already have it framed <laughs> yeah well i have moved a lot and you know i'm lucky you know that it didn't happen before the house burnt down i'm lucky it didn't get destroyed in that flood because it was 124 degrees last year when our house flooded and wow. the water was running for days before our friends found it. You know, it was like mushrooms growing on a wall. It know? wasn't that bad. Okay, it no, wasn't, that bad. wasn't that bad. But still, though, I mean, <laughs> it's awful, awful thing. That yeah, happened. you had a pretty bad run there for a couple months there with a with a house and an RV uh, not uh, being in the shape right from the get go and all yeah. that. It was yeah. quite a. There must have been a lesson in there for me to learn. Yep. Well, you know? yeah, so. And um, we are certainly enjoying, we are not taking this trip for granted. No. Uh, we're up there and we hold hands and we're walking along and we're going, are we lucky or what? You know? Absolutely. You know, and we're sitting there and eagles are flying over our head. And then Jane got those, that picture of the osprey with that fish in its talons. And then that eagle came down after. I mean, that stuff is magic to me. Oh, my oh yeah, that shot when it's touching, just touching the water, it's like, yeah, wow, you know. And then, then both ha like it's it's you guys gotta go and watch the latest video of uh, Ken and Jane. You can see the pictures; they're really, really great captures. I think Jane's gonna be a really good uh, photographer, and she's got a really good eye. Yeah, and a fast finger yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. Because, <laughs> That's not an uh, easy of, shot. Yeah, that you did some for... of the moments there is like, wow, that was really like you know, yeah. to manage to capture it. Uh, I wish I had a better lens at the time. I was like, ah. Yeah, well, that's always, you know, but uh, that's why I said you probably need like 600 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we'll, it, wow. Eventually. We'll, we'll definitely get one. Wasn't it you that was saying uh, eBay or Craigslist or something? Yeah. People, people are always unloading their glass because there's a lot of them into it, and all they do is just keep buying everything that comes out new and getting rid of their other stuff. Right. And it doesn't matter. Like even something that's five, six years old, it's still in mint condition. It's not like something yeah. they go throwing all over the place. Right. Well, the Just lens that I used was a, a refurbished on Amazon. So yeah, that's another option. Oh. Yeah. 
It was like, yep. yay. I know, so, so. There's all kinds of deals out there when you look around for them. Only thing is if you buy them on Chrysler or something, definitely make sure you bring your camera. You got your mount, try it right away and make right. sure, you make sure it's the same distortion. millimeters or whatever, yeah. Most people are good, but you know, there's always that one in a hundred that will try something. Oh, so. yeah. The main thing, there is no like hairline cracks yeah. in the glass. And then, uh, other than that, it should be fine. <laughs> it's always just smart to be, you know, just to just check it some of that five minutes and then you'll feel more comfortable with it. So, but yeah. you can save a lot of money. People like Peter McKinnon, them guys still buy secondhand glass. You'll hear them talking about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's not some like, uh, starving photographer syndrome why well especially because if you if you don't know if you're going to be using on a daily yeah. basis if you don't know if you like it well then you know some of them are pretty pricey then uh you know try it out first well you guys are lucky in the states stuff. too you have that what's the name of it that you can rent uh lenses you i think it's rent lens uh rent lens. Com or com something or something. like that yeah oh i didn't know about that yeah because you can try it and see if you like it you know and that it's yes it's a bit of money to rent but at least then you get a feel for the lens right, see yeah. it's the right one for you we yes. have yes to all pockets and uh, he actually did uh, yes. uh, yeah he actually did a birthday surprise for his wife because she's kind of getting into photography as well uh he rented two uh, lenses uh, before they went on a trip for her birthday yeah. uh two different lenses that she haven't tried before uh as for the trip and so she could actually take pictures uh you know of, of the with using different lenses and she really enjoyed it and they yeah. use that, uh, um, uh, I think it's rentlenses.com. They use that and then they just return it. They have all the batteries, everything inside. They come in pouches, you know. Great idea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and I think it's like a, it has like a network all through states, you know. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, check it out. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Uh, that's on my list. Definitely. Well, <laughs> well, we have to get a better lens, you know, for stuff like this. Well, this, I mean, this is a great lens for just hiking. I mean, it's not it's not so heavy that you're going oh my gosh you know you're leaning over to one side carrying yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely you want something yeah. so yeah. It, it's light enough to be able to do but I, I, at the time i was just sitting there he was fishing and i was just sitting there so i could have had a, a much bigger lens but um yeah but and you know until you get into it because it is money even buying second hand or like whatever yeah. you got to feel if it is right for you some people i've seen go and blow the whole bank on buying a whole setup and it's not for them because mm -hmm. there's a lot more work working with the lens and that's it is okay to shoot power shoot if that's what you're into if you're more into that in the end it's okay but it's good to find out and work your way like i bought xenia her first camera was for a wedding we got married in iceland and her wedding gift i cool. bought her was a new camera so that was our um kind of introduction because i already seen she was liking pictures we had bought her one but it was more of a point and shoot before that so yeah then what i felt drew to iceland but what, what was the draw to Iceland to get married there? Uh, long story short, <laughs> uh, I was in grade six going to school in eastern Quebec in a pitiful school where they don't have, you know, can imagine what the encyclopedias were like. And we had to do a school project on countries, and I drew Iceland, so I was terrified because there was nothing, like one blurb. And that's back when they were still saying that the Soviet Union exists, and I don't even know if they confirmed Christopher Columbus in those books. And <laughs> <laughs> so I was terrified by the time I was done. I swore that was the one thing I'd do in my life. That was my first travel goal was to go to Iceland. That's cool. And then Xenia was from, like, we met on a computer game years ago. She was in Latvia. We were 7,000 kilometers apart. A wow. game called Second Life. We hated the game but stayed friends and kept in touch. And That's like us. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say a while ago. That's when you guys were telling your story. It's a bit familiar, you know? Mm -hmm. So we were together for years, and then uh, we were looking – um Xenia's dad was murdered when she was 16 and then her grandmother and mother died three weeks apart the year before god so i didn't want to get married again i didn't want to go through because we're both catholic i had, and i didn't want to do an annulment and i wasn't anyways that's a whole nother ball of wax so i said i didn't want to but then i thought it's kind of selfish she's got nobody she has no more parents or grandparents she's 29 she's seven thousand kilometers from home and here's another person that doesn't want to like you know make it official so we were talking about it back and forth and then finally she said didn't you always want to go to iceland and i'm like i've wanted to my whole life and she said well what if we got married there and i was like okay it's dirty but good idea <laughs> I uh, and, uh, in all honesty he too. actually uh, he proposed to me uh, like a couple of years before that and uh, yeah. it was like very 
uh, romantic with a tinfoil ring in the middle of the rain, <laughs> under rain, uh, knee deep in the mud by the railroad. So <laughs> it's Saskatchewan, it's Saskatchewan, flattest part of the world. Yeah. Well, yeah. As you can say, it's going to get better from here. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so that was a couple of years before that, and it actually got better so that we could actually <laughs> afford to go to Iceland. And <laughs> And uh, and yeah, and so that's why kind of the second proposal was more a suggestion from my part. Well, okay, let's do that in Iceland, you know. That's cool. And the last part was because Iceland, because Exen is from Europe and I'm from Canada. Iceland is where the tectonic plates meet, so we met in the that's middle. Cool. Where we started. Yeah, yeah. So that's we had a Viking. Cool. We actually had a Viking wedding, a pagan wedding. Uh, it was an actual old 700 year old Viking site we got married into. Oh. That is awesome. Yeah. I would love to see that. Well, there's a. Um, Look it again. You ever hear the TV show Vikings? Yeah, I, I never watched that, but. Uh... That's where Xenia's wedding dress came from in the end. Wow. Really? Yeah, because we love the show, and I, I never picked out a dress for anything in my life. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, I know the dress you need. So I. We finished watching season two, so I had to watch it again on like three times the speed and uh, picked out her wedding dress. So that's, that's, there's just a short. Oh, oh wow. Wow. Yeah. That was our, she was a priestess from, uh, we found her online uh, through another wedding. And yeah, she did the weddings for us. Very so. cool. It was a hurricane that day. We got married on Canada Day, which is July 1st. Aww. Easy yeah. to remember. Easy to remember. Yeah. <laughs> Look how good looking you guys nice. are. Yeah, it feels like a million years ago. <laughs> I used to be good looking too. <laughs> you, you still are. That's the thing. You're making me jealous. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm 64. Jane's 10 years younger than me. Nine. Yes. Same for oh, 10 weird. years too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, you know, meeting online is a pretty cool thing when you become friends because you don't have to worry about waiting for the mask to fall off. Yeah. You know, you haven't gotten intimate or any of that other stuff. You just become friends. Yeah. You and do. The mask never was there you know you, you get to know people better you know yes. you get to know them yeah yeah because i mean we talk so much online like through the skype and uh, i i think uh you know like when you date and you you go every so often out uh, you talk but this you know it, it it requires more time to have that quality right. get to know each other but when you right. talk constantly online you get to know each other like really in the quality yeah. sense of it so much faster right because i mean you talk all the time. What are you going to talk at the end of the third hour? You know, <laughs> it's going deeper and deeper. So I think that the getting to know part when meeting yeah. online, it's so much faster and deeper than when you date and, and then, you know, get married. We do the old start talking at eight and all of a sudden it's 2 a.m. Yeah. You know? Like, <laughs> you know, and, you know, you don't want to hang up. Yes. In trouble then. Yeah. <laughs> It starts creeping in your life, and it's like we got to get together soon, or otherwise this is going to ruin my. Life. You know what I mean? Like because you're yeah. so caught up in each other, the other world doesn't almost exist. Well, I was so afraid to marry her because I kept saying, "I'm going to die." You know, yeah. this isn't going to happen. You know, and she goes, "No, you're not." Yeah. And uh, yeah, life, life. I am thrilled that we met the way that we did, and that it worked yeah. out the way it did because it it really is working out, and. To better than I ever I didn't even know what real love was I wow. didn't I had no clue I knew how, what love was with for my children I love right. my children more you know that love but yeah. that other love I, I, I didn't know what that was and now I do and boy is it cool you know having a best friend to go you know mess around with you know a best friend that's um so nice. what's better than that yeah. you know you we could walked around that anyone. lake uh, like on that last video we walked around that lake we had so much fun you know it's uh i think i'm getting younger <laughs> i love that i i love it yeah I, I i get what you're saying and you know what you're what you said is very true and you do feel younger from it don't you yes absolutely i do i yeah. absolutely you know I, I think about the word 64 going on 65 and I think about when I was a kid and somebody said that they were that old. Well, they were from, a, they were, they were not human. They yeah. were old, you know, and that, you know, they were old. It's a category where they're just kind of like beings like mummies almost like in their own. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the thing about, I think our culture, Western culture in general, 
Yeah. We don't value the elders. And right. honestly, I think this is the best part of my life. I'm having the best time now. Mine too. And also, you know, I don't care what people think about me anymore. Well, it's yeah. Like, it's such I'm a... enjoying my life. I'm having a good time. If you like what I'm doing, great. If you don't, okay, that's all right. Not a problem. Bye. It's a free <laughs> feeling it is. It really, you really it is. It's a wonderful, freeing feeling. And I hope people get that through our videos, too, that we're just having fun. You know, we're just out here having fun. Like they said, oh, to be on YouTube, you have to have a niche. You have to have this. You have to have that. And I go, well, ours is our life, you know. Your so niche whatever. is being you. Yeah. Yeah. It, the whole thing is just us. Yeah. Nope. That's it. See, I had a friend here. Like, I'm, I'm 44, and we were talking. I hadn't seen him in a while. He came here, and we were actually talking about going into our 40s. And I was saying my sister fought it really hard. He didn't like it very much. I don't say much about my past marriage because I have a son from there and I don't want to bash her. But like right. since Xenia's come in my life, and I mean, I did a lot of the music stuff. I did that all before Xenia, well, more towards before Xenia yeah. and I were together. Unfortunately. But yeah, I know because <laughs> she would have loved it. it. I yeah. know she would have loved being there for it. But I've my 40s have been absolutely fantastic. And I didn't live like some sheltered life. I did a lot of great things. But the things that I enjoy now so much more and don't take for granted, and thanks to her, like I've done more traveling. Most of those countries that I've been to have been in my 40s. I've gone like jumping on a train for two weeks, traveling all over Europe, sleeping in cars, taking my kids across ice. <laughs> I've never did any of that stuff before yeah. that, and I love every second of it. So I don't regret my 40s. I'm glad I'm at a point now in my life where I can do something like that and appreciate what it's worth, right. not yeah. piss it away. Exactly. You know, it's exactly. if you I, did I it when you're 19, it's, it's fun, but you don't ever acknowledge how much you got while you're doing it. Right. I think you have to like I always saw that and, and even more after my mom passed away, because she had that philosophy that uh, you know, what what are you saving for uh you know, like putting stuff away like in your yeah. thoughts of well later, when you know, when this comes or when this happens, I'm gonna do that. Well, when, when, when? Well, when is when is that when? You know, she always said, like, don't uh put your finest china on, on the cupboard for the better times. Use right. it now. Yeah. You know, what are you saving it for? Now is the good time. And I I think after she passed away, I kind of thought even more about that, you know, like you have to enjoy your life and you have to go with your dream now, not some kind of future that might not even happen because you never know what is going to happen. Right. Well, Absolutely. that's for sure. That is for sure. Yep. Absolutely. Well, we're loving life and I agree with Jane. This is the very best, this, but without a doubt, this is the very best time of my life. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, I can just, you know, it's like, yeah, but you're 64. And I'm like, so the best time yeah. to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the things you've been through. Would you have enjoyed it back when you were drinking? Would you have enjoyed it when you were sick? No, you can't. The way you can now, I definitely enjoy every savor every second of it. Lodge was saying they can't, they can't believe that you are in uh, your sixties, yeah, well, 60s, sixties. Yeah. 60s, yeah. <laughs> I knew that was going to shock everybody when I came out. I think your videos you were talking about, not you know, like it has to be a certain niche or things. Uh, I think your videos are more of a uh, inspiration of yeah. loving life. Yep. Because that's how I feel when when I watch them. Uh, that's the that's the vibe that I get out of them when I watch your videos. Is loving life. That's basically that's what yeah. we want to portray, basically, and that's what we want to share. I think is um, you know just the joy, the joy, and it, it can be simple things. You know, yeah. you don't need um, a lot of material things. You need love. You need your family, and yeah. you need experiences with each other. Nope. And That's that true. doesn't take a lot to do. Right. I mean, we're lucky that we're able to travel around and do this kind of stuff. But yep. honestly, um, just, you know, being with the people that you love, spending time with them and making just awesome memories that's that's what life is about. And you want to know something? We have spent less money <laughs> traveling yep. than we would have at just staying home. Like, yep. oh, how can we afford it? Can we afford this? We have spent way less, less money. money. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's surprised us, you know, I mean, and we're not, well, we are kind of penny pension. We have to, to get by, but yeah. every, not but, bad. no, not at oh, all. It's a great thing. Yeah. You have to pick and choose your battles. And when we travel, like people used to say to us, Oh, I wish I could travel like you guys. 
well, okay, we traveled, but we also watch what we spent. Like when we were in Iceland for the six days with the kids, we had no hotels. We had a four and an eight year old for six days in a Honda Civic, no <laughs> hotels. Oh my God. Because we, we, of the midnight sun, we bathed in like 500 year old Viking hot pools in the middle of farmers' fields. Because so cool. I want them to see that not everything is bought. That right. you can enjoy things just for what they are. And they never complained. They no. never asked, are we there yet? Because they were having so much fun. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. That's well, great. What that's the And life. how close that brings a family. You it know? does. Yes. It does. We took them to, because then we looked at the flights we were going to Latvia where Xenia grew up. And to fly that day from Iceland was going to cost, I forget how much, but... We had to go through Denmark. If we stayed in Denmark, rented a car for four days, it was cheaper than flying that day straight through. It was such a price difference. Mm -hmm. So we rented another car. We stayed one night at friends in Iceland, went back in the car for four more days in an Audi 5 and went all through Denmark. Mm -hmm. And we went to the Legoland. My parents bought the passes for the day for the kids for graduating. <laughs> But the hotel was six hundred dollars a night. Ah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> and we're like, "Yep." So we slept in a hurricane, hundred kilometer winds. The car was shaking like that. The kids slept like a log. I'm still it. talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, about Legoland, it's made. That's the original place because that's where it's made in Bilzebun. Uh, Bilzebun. Yeah. They, if you drive through the town, it's just this little rural town where Lego is made. And they have these gigantic Lego blocks strung all through the town in fields and everything. And they're like gigantic 16-foot-long blocks, like two of them like this. It looks like a giant was playing with them and walked How away. That yeah. Cool. Yeah. You know, it's about a five-mile, uh, five-kilometer circle where you can find them like all over the place like that. That's yeah. cool. And that's the perfect age for them, you know? Yes. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, no. Awesome. But like we don't spend money. Our kids don't do a lot of professional. Like hockey here is big. Hockey is an extremely expensive sport. It's a four grand a year sport minimum. Uh, all those other things we pick and choose. We don't trade our car in every year. We don't. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know, yeah. Do. yeah. And that's a really okay. debt free. That's the trick, man. I learned twenty years ago. I got debt free twenty years ago, and I realized how much money I was saving. Oh yeah. And oh, we yeah. live debt free. And boy, let me tell you what. Yeah, you don't drive a brand new rig. My truck is 18 years old, but it's a great truck, you know. <laughs> and yeah. it runs like a top, you know. Um, and I don't care. It's paid for. Like people say, ah, how old is it? You going to get a new one? You know, look at my brand new truck. And I go, no, this one's paid for. Uh, you know, I be paid for you know? i drive a 2005 mazda tribute that i bought brand new we are so much alike and it's terrifying i love it <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, i don't bother me i don't need a brand new car no 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 we we don't either um our last car we, the one we got after the little blue car got totaled out um it's towable we we bought it because it's towable and it's a four years old yeah, we bought a 2012 Honda. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. know, we save thousands right there buying used, and we can yeah. pull it if we want, but we've decided pulling a car, it defeats our purpose. Yeah, we don't really yeah. need to. We've got a 28 foot motorhome now, and it's like, we got the fifth wheel out in the desert, park permanent, and then we have the 28 foot motorhome that we drive around in. And it's like, it's not that much longer than the truck. It's like six, seven feet longer than a, you know, truck. Right. It's easy to get around in. So, so cool. you know, we can get to state parks, national parks, just basically almost anywhere we want to go in it. And, uh, you know, just the rainy days that are like a little bit challenging. Yeah. It's challenging. Day. <laughs> it's, rainy day. it's not, it's not though. Um, it's, uh, and especially like with, with this, um, conversation that we're having, this is just real easy. You know yeah. I mean? It just, you guys make people feel real easy. That's I forget. Cool. Yeah. You know, it's like you're sitting on the other side of the room and, hey, we just met some new friends, you know. I love Kept, I've been watching you guys for a while yeah. and you guys got us to a thousand. Do you yeah. remember that That's that night? Right. <laughs> like Mother's Day, it was Mother's Day weekend. Yeah. Yes. Because I was going to congratulate you to a thousand, see my memory, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, she, that's why Thank she's 10 you. years younger. I always say she's my retirement plan. That's why I married her. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Uh, but thank you, yes. thank you. We hope so because you know we always say that it's like drama free and stress free. Just kick up your feet, you know, yeah. and kind of watch or be a part of it as you are today. 
And um, thank you for saying that. We hope that that's how it comes out. Because you guys have been there since the beginning. You're one of the, like I call the alumni. So it's really nice when we get to talk because we've seen each other so much in chats and each other's videos. And it's so nice to finally sit down and talk for a little while. Yeah, it really is. Um, I was I was thinking, I wonder how this is going to be. Yeah, he was nervous. What am he I going to say? He was nervous. She goes, you've been on stage like, for four decades and you're worried about it? You know? <laughs> Chilling like, around the house. Yeah. I was like, no problem. You I'm know? going, what if we can't figure out how to hook this damn thing up? <laughs> and here you are. Yeah, here we are. Don't worry about it. I'm usually the one that worries, you know? So it's really funny to be kind of <laughs> the position of him being the worry ward and me being like, chill. You know? So it's kind of fun. Does it yeah. frustrate you, kid, when she doesn't worry, like, as much, or like, or vice versa? Like, that drives <laughs> me crazy with Xenia. <laughs> Um, what really frustrates me is technical stuff and she's so smooth with it you know and she can figure it out even if she hasn't done it so she can cool. figure it out yeah but you're good at it and yeah. i can't you know i'm like don't touch it it'll break you know <laughs> my son's always saying older people are afraid uh, don't run them as well because they're afraid of them they're afraid to push buttons and go places you know but i was going to mention my son my son uh I don't know if you saw the video of the um, when we were uh, on the ocean and we jumped off those rocks and we did it in slow motion. Well, the rock I jumped off was pretty high. <laughs> it was the same rock I jumped off of. It was. Yours was. A, no. uh, yeah, yours was up. Yours was three feet lower no. than mine. OK, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my son he wrote fell. me. He says, Dad. Please don't jump off of any more rocks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I went, yeah, you're probably right. But uh, and I, we, we made it look like I just did it so smooth. And then later on in the next video, we put it in and it shows me just biting the dirt. Crash landing. <laughs> crash landing. Oh, my God, oh, That's so funny. In slow mo. <laughs> yeah, in slow motion. Wow. That was fun. Well, what experiences, though, to get to do, eh? Yeah. Yeah. This country, you know, we were talking about the other night. Like, I mean, I love Europe because I always wanted to go there. And I mean, my, I always think Xenia was my greatest souvenir I ever brought back from traveling. Yeah, and, Soviet, uh, Soviet souvenir. <laughs> <laughs> but there's so much to see in North America. And I mean, I count Canada and the United States. I mean, we're, we're so connected between it, you know. There's such a bond there between them. I kind of look at them sometimes as one big lump. Absolutely. And we have so much between us. You know, we cover the whole gamut from deserts to the Rockies to, you know, the Appalachians, the, the flatlands of the prairies. It's unbelievable. You spend your whole life traveling around and never see all of it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Canada's huge. We, we actually, that's our, really one of our bucket lists is uh, Canada. And we're really hoping to go to Canada next year, but we're just going to have to see, you know. Um, well, if you guys ever do, I know it's a long way from where you guys are. Anywhere getting close to the east side, you let us know. Oh, my God. Yeah. And travels through Canada, it's so amazing. I mean, I had a, a you know, a luck, <laughs> <laughs> a blessing with, with your help to go through almost all of the provinces in Canada. And, and, and it's such a vast, I mean, the nature is, is just yeah. so amazing. Well, them as well, too. Like, I mean, to the States as no, well. She wants course. to see the States now. Uh, yeah, we've yeah, done I the northern the side. We've done yeah. North Dakota. And we've done the, the eastern seaboard northern part. But, yeah, I definitely want to take her further into the States now. And I used to be a truck driver years ago. That's where I got to see a lot of it. But you only see it. That's what you do. You see interstate. Right. Uh, yeah. You know? And when you deliver, everybody says, oh, you're in San Francisco. Well, yeah, but it wasn't the beautiful part of San Francisco. Nobody yeah. goes to the docks. <laughs> you know? right. So, right. so I'd like to see these places again more where I can just drive in and really enjoy them. We love to go to San Francisco, and we go to the ballpark and watch the Giants play. That is the oh. most amazing ballpark in the world. I can you're imagine. Sitting there, looking out, and above the field, you're watching ships the size of, you know, the, the, the stadium. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. Out, yeah. That's an unbelievable good. view, I can imagine. Uh, Jane, what I wanted to ask you when you're talking about traveling around the globe, what was your favorite place uh, out of all the places that you have visited? And um, I think New Zealand, absolutely New Zealand. And I think it was um, partially, um, I just, I love the wildlife that I saw there. I mean, I got to see penguins and albatross, oh and huge albatross 
I mean, huge uh, wildlife lover. I love animals. Um, and um, New Zealand, also the people were just so wonderful, so friendly. And um, it was just, it was a great time. Um, I really enjoyed traveling in New Zealand. I went with there with my mom in 99 and we went with absolutely no reservations. Uh -huh. we, just, we took the plane over and we just drove wherever we wanted to go and stayed where we wanted to stay. And we just met really nice, nice people. We went to this one little um, farm where it was a gentleman and his wife who had a um, bed and breakfast, but they also had a sheep ranch. I don't know if that's uh -huh. what you call it. Um, but he took us through and he did like a, a whole tour of his, you know, sheep operation <laughs> and uh, showed us the, the, the dogs doing the um, sheep herding and, you know, commanding the dogs. The what do they call them? Kelp, not Kelpies. Um, I know you're talking about. I, I'm so jealous dogs. right now. Oh, my border God. Collie. Border collies. The border border collies. collies. Yeah. Doing the, the, the herding of the sheep. And um, we had just just me and my mom were on the tour. And then oh. when it was done, he asked us for like five bucks. And we're like, really? <laughs> I think we gave him $20, you know? And it was just like, he, we spent all these hours with him and he was just so nice. And uh, it was just a lot of fun. And um, oh. yeah, I only drove on the wrong side of the road once. <laughs> <laughs> How do you find a driving? Because I've done that before. What do you think of it? <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> Drive it, yeah. Um, yeah, no, New Zealand's absolutely beautiful. And that was before all the, the movies, you know, and such that they had done there. But, um, oh my god, I would, go back to heartbeat. I would love to go there I'll go with you. Yeah, I, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, somebody's talking about my sister in here, Philip, because <laughs> my sister comes in now and then. And he said, uh, where was it? I wish Jody was here. That's Andrew's older sister. She and she puts him in line. She's actually my younger sister, but I can't yeah. wait to tell her that. It's so. because uh, Ken, your sister, was seeing that, and uh, that she was yeah. saying how she was chasing you uh, around the kitchen with a butcher knife. So yeah. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> we were just little kids, and she was just playing. But you know, yeah. We, we, oh, go ahead. She used to get stuck with me, you know, because my parents were always gone, and. Uh, I felt sorry for her. You know, she was stuck with a kid with ADD. <laughs> I was like moving. I was always in trouble. I was always in trouble as a kid. You're and a handful. I stayed that way. I left he home. Still is. I, <laughs> I left home when I was 16 and I went on, you know, I went in a lot, said I was 18, started working with grown men, you know. And uh, it was. It was interesting. I've had an interesting life that way, you know, but it taught me so much. You know, it taught me how to work. It taught me, you know, like my friend was saying to me way, way back. He goes, how come you're, you don't have really good clothes? I mean, he's, I don't know. And I looked at him and go, cause I don't live with my mom and my dad. That's you know, great. I have to pay rent. You know, the house you're partying in right now, I pay the rent, you know, yeah. he didn't have a clue. He still doesn't. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> It is scary. Some of them can go to be the age they are and still have no clue. Your sister, that. by the way, says that you're remembering it wrong. You were about 10 and she was 16 <laughs> and you were bugging her. <laughs> I was bugging her. Yeah. Yes. I, I always bugged her. I, yeah. He lies too. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jack. I'm back in on this one, Jackie. I should have known that. Uh, sorry, Jack. Sister-in-laws always back each other. Yeah. Right? Thank you, Jackie, for the inside view. <laughs> Great. Oh. I let her know that we were going to do this, so she, she was able to connect up. I'm really happy that she made it. Yeah. I'm so – I think that's so amazing. I love that. We haven't – I don't know if we've had that too much before. No, um, I don't I think, think so. that's yeah, really it's cool. It's great to, to have family. It, it is, you know. It's <laughs> – my sister, uh, Joy, I couldn't find the picture, but when we were talking about age a while ago, it was about my sister because she hated turning 40. We're only 11 months apart because I'm adopted. So she turned 40. I turned 40. Didn't bother me at all. She turns 40. She hated it when she had a party. And uh, I put up the pictures. And one of her old teachers said, uh, oh, it's nice to see you both together, but I find your sister's aged a little better than you have. 
Oh, and I said, oh, I said, well, that's how, that's because I photoshopped it a little bit better to make her feel better. And I said, here's the original. And I cut out my sister and I literally put in this like 89 year old blue hair in her place. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this was before the Photoshop jobs. So. <laughs> your sister loves you. Yeah, yeah. We always, your brother and sister that never changes no matter who you are. Yeah. 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 She kindly told me to go help me to have a great big glass of go F myself. <laughs> That's what yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's got a bit of a sailor mouth on her. Well, she's short. That's Well, she's vertically challenged, I always called her. Yes. So that's why she's got to be more mouthy. That's why. I know everyone wants to uh, Jackie to make a video. Oh. <laughs> I know at the beginning of the stream they were already yeah. asking her, and now it's another <laughs> run of it. So <laughs> they're really loving her. And Jackie says, "Bless you, Jane." <laughs> yeah, she also was saying that you are very humble, Jane, in in uh, your role in uh, mm -hmm. in the recovery after yes. a liver transfer a transplant. Yeah. That you basically you did it all. She said. Yeah. I don't know. I guess so. I just did what I needed to do. And she you did know. do it all. Yeah, so. it's, there's no kidding about it. I mean, I mean, Jackie knows, um, but it's, uh, you know, you know, we got, it was great because we got to stop on this trip. We stopped by and saw Jackie for a couple of days and it yeah, was a was great a lot of fun. couple really of good days. Um, we were going to put together a video and I thought, God, I hope she doesn't, you know, you're putting together a uh, editing a yeah, video. It's a lot thought, of work. You know, I hope she doesn't mind us doing that, you know, and she loved it. She jumped right in there and was, she loved the whole thing, you know. <laughs> She's probably going to start a YouTube channel soon. <laughs> yes, yes, looks like that. <laughs> yeah, we're getting a lot of hashtag Jackie now starting. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody loved her on the video, the part that we put her in. And... um <laughs> She pulled it off so well. Yes. But um, everybody after that was like, hi, Jackie. <laughs> Even videos later, they're going, where's Jackie? Hi, Jackie. <laughs> oh, they, they loved Jackie. She pulled, she pulled it off really well in that video. That was so you know, cool. That was uh, the Redwoods, wasn't it? When we went to the Redwoods. I think so, yeah. Look at that. You didn't even let me say one word. That's it. That was it. <laughs> she sat between us, and you know, we were going on about the trip and going on, and she was kind of sitting there, kind of mildly looking back and forth. And at the very end, she, she, we had just on her, she goes, They didn't even let me say one word. <laughs> no. We're gonna look that up. We gotta see yes, that one. Yeah. Oh, the, I'd see even Benjamin Chavez. Time for another video with her in it. So yeah, yeah. we got to go back for another visit. We promise. You know the Benjamin. You know Benjamin. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, Benjamin is a new. Uh, uh, just had a baby not long ago. Oh, I didn't oh, know that. Oh, congrats. We didn't know till he did a selfie. We started a new thing here with like joking around with all the hashtags going around. So we call ours Blue Wrench Group because everybody gets a blue wrench. So we started asking people to do selfies of themselves watching our live stream. And then he sent it in with holding the baby watching them. Oh, oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah the new generation. <laughs> oh, it was really sweet. Benjamin's are really so amazing. Another great one from the beginning. Another alumni. You yes. Know. Yeah. Definitely. And a good support, a good friend, everybody in that, you know. Now, I, I have, I think it's time to ask question about writing songs and playing them. There has been hint, 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 hint. <laughs> there has been a couple of them on your uh, channel, uh, and I really I enjoyed the one about the life mm. and uh, going through <laughs> everything and having having a second chance mm. on mm. it. But you have a couple of them, the one that you wrote yourself as well, uh, later yes. on your channel and. Um, I like I always want to ask the people who write themselves is how how does it happen for you like how you just What's sit the down process? and yeah like, how do you get inspired well for instance I'm working on a song right now that we're not even sure we're going to put it up on the air and um it's I've been working on it for I don't know two to three weeks and it's still not coming together and then I'll sit down and write a song in five minutes. And uh, I don't know. People have always asked me, how do you write? How do you write so quick? Even the guys that were in the band with me. And I have no idea how I write so quick. I ideas just come to me. And 
the thing of it is, is that I'm so new on guitar. I'm learning, you know, um, I'm learning and learning, you know, and, and people, especially like Philip Cochran, if he's, if he's in the house he's here. Yep. Yeah. Philip, I mean, he's a great guitar player yeah. you know? and you're going, Oh God, Philip's going to see this. Because <laughs> <laughs> you suck, you know, it's like, I know how, I know that, you know, I've only been playing two years, you know, a couple of years and I started in my sixties and you see these great guitar players and you're like, Oh God, Philip's going to see this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, writing, just for instance when we wrote the magic bus and how our rv got named the magic bus we had we needed to fill in this place um on the video where we were driving down the road because otherwise it was just driving down the road yeah and we needed to put something behind it and i just started playing it and then i just started making up the words you know and uh and so i've done that song three times and the words are always different because i always just make it up on the spot mm -hmm. um and people have, i've gone without playing it and people have actually said are you gonna play the magic bus again <laughs> you know <laughs> so it, it became kind of a, a thing you know um right. and it's a real simple song you know i mean i, I write very simple things and uh it, the songwriting process is different, I think, for everybody. You know, yes. as Dylan said, uh, I didn't write that song. I just reached up in the air and grabbed it as it was going by, you know. Yeah. And uh, some, I don't know how Dylan could do that because, I mean, who could write? I always, I'm always amazed at Tangled Up in Blue. Every time I hear that, I'm going, oh, my God, he's fantastic, yeah. you know, to it's write awesome. that song. Um yeah. If he made that up on the spot, I'm like, I'm just blown away. But he is a great, great writer. But, you know, everybody writes differently. Some people sit down and take a year to write one song. Some people sit down and write them right on the spot, you know. Um, I wrote The Ballad of Ken and Jane. That was the first song that I ever started to learn was The Ballad of Ken and Jane. Really? Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. And uh, as I was messing with it and Jane was walking around and um, it was out of camp and I was just messing with a few chords that I had learned. And I just I, I, I called it. I love you, you know, because I was just saying, I love you, you know, and it, it was a, and then it just evolved and became the ballad of Ken and Jane. Oh, cool. And that was actually one of our more popular musical videos. Wow, it's a great. Um, oh, I'm surprised that you would. I, I'm kind of threw me for a loop on that one. I think you've been playing for a while and doing it together. Good job. Very yeah. good. Yeah, been singing for decades. Right. But just yeah. playing guitar for uh, not quite two years. <laughs> but Basically, singing. He was sitting at home. Uh, we moved to Havasu, and none of his musician friends were around. And uh, he was complaining that he had all these songs going in his head. And no place for them to go. And it's like, I don't have a guitar player. I can't write a song. And I said, well, why don't you learn to play guitar? And hmm. he said to me, I can't learn to play guitar. I'm 62 years old. And I said, well, how old are you going to be next year? You know, <laughs> are you going to wait? 90. Yeah. So, um, you know, he just said, okay. And he hasn't had a formal lesson. Wow. In guitar. I, I would oh, never, yeah. I mean, and I'm mm. not a musician, but I would never be able to tell that. I mean, I thought that you have been playing since your band years. No, mm -mm. no, just a couple of years. Yeah. The wow. singing, yes, and the songwriting, yes, but not yeah. the other. The wow. more you play guitar and sing, the more you got to forget that you're playing guitar, and that's hard now that you're learning guitar. But you're going to get to that point, and then you're going to have to start figuring with the guitar and put more into the full. That's my way I find is easier. I, but of course, it's no golden rule. Everybody's different. Do you I play find, guitar? Oh yeah, I oh, played. Cool. I started when I was about twelve, Aww. and then I uh, we was telling the story last night. We had a band, and because uh, everybody wanted to start a band, rural area there was eighty guitar players, two basses, no drummers. So I literally went over and got this guy, my friend's father, drunk. He played for a country band. I <laughs> got my friend when I was sixteen to come over with some beer. I brought him over, got him drunk, and bought his set for two hundred dollars and left before he sobered up. And then I taught myself <laughs> how to play drums so we could have a band. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah, 
I've always found it was really hard to find a bass player, and it was even harder to find a drummer. Well, it's so much work with drums, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's got the beat down. And like I say, you know, a band is nothing without that bottom end. Oh, it is for sure, because the drummer, you control everything. I mean, it's a good thing they're more easy going people because you can have a God complex. You can speed up. You can throw everybody yeah. off, whatever you want to do. You can throw it. the singer for a loop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, when we were about to break up our first band, I got a little cocky, I guess, and played that trick on him a couple of times. Yeah, it's speeding up and you're going. Yeah, that's, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> Awful, but true. Yeah. <laughs> we're not so nice when we're 17, 18. <laughs> no, we're not, you know. And we play lots of tricks and we have lots of fun. And uh, little did we know that we'd be having more fun in our 50s and 60s or 40s. Oh, yeah. That's right. I mean, you know, it prepared us for what was coming. We didn't even know it at the time. You know, yeah. I mean, I did I had my fair share of stuff when I was younger, drug wise, and that when I gave it up. And now we've like we were telling the story, and you hate some when we went to Amsterdam that one night. Really? Like, <laughs> can we limit it to once a week at least? He's gonna start it up again. <laughs> Unbelievable! It's like every I, I night won't, now. It's like, I wasn't gonna tell it. it. You're beautiful in that. You're building it up. You're gonna get. I thought you looked Seriously. great. He looked like shit. <laughs> He looks oh, like he was hammered. <laughs> I made it our Facebook. <laughs> I made it our Facebook profile picture for about two weeks. She was furious. Yeah, well, now I, I, I am I not furious now? You have been telling that story. I don't know how many times, especially. <laughs> it was a very a special. It was a special moment in our life. <laughs> People are yeah. up already about it. <laughs> and how do, we, how do we not know that we're stepping into the pit? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oops! Exactly. I did it again. <laughs> It's one of the more touching stories, I call it. It's the feel-good story of the year, <laughs> literally. <laughs> but I don't like being out of control anymore. I realized that with myself. That was where I was going with it. Thanks for drawing attention to it. Though. Oh, no, no, yeah, because that was me, of course. Of course, always welcome. I, I like your attitude about it. <laughs> oh, that was such an interesting night. <laughs> She, she oh remembers it fondly, as you can see. <laughs> well, I always said if I was Hilarious. ever in Amsterdam, so I guess I kept true to my word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one was to go to Iceland and enjoy it. The other one was to go to Amsterdam and enjoy it, I guess. So. All right. Where's your next bucket list? Oh, I'd love to do New Zealand. I'd love to, but it's going to be hard with the kids right now. But that is like Maybe probably later. the next highest yeah. one. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, the, one of the biggest ones probably is New Zealand. Uh, <laughs> no, don't ask Xenia. <laughs> Hers is to kill me through through driving. She wants to go to Portugal and basically me to drive all the way to Italy. She don't drive. Yeah. Like 4,000 kilometers through like windy yeah. roads that are probably like, you know yeah. what, 50, 30 miles an hour. The first ones. I want to start in Lisbon and then like rent a car, start in Lisbon and just go all uh, around like uh, a Mediterranean um, sea uh, to Italy. Oh, my beautiful. car. Oh yeah. yeah, and I mean, yeah. we have traveled from coast to coast in Canada. We have been in Iceland, all around the coast. We have been yeah. through Europe. What's so different? Because the roads there, you know what they're gonna look like. It's gonna be nothing but this and doing thirty miles an hour. Because she looks on a map, and if it's like this on her fingers, that's, that's like all. Three thousand. <laughs> it's only <laughs> this thousand miles. It's the same as Saskatchewan. It's like we can do it in an afternoon or something. No, <laughs> no. I wanna, I wanna go to uh, Gibraltar, you know, and then. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's all so beautiful there. I'm definitely we're going like in an in an old Fiat, you know, like a bright green or something like that. But no, in all seriousness, I do <laughs> want to go through that route, and <laughs> that's what I'm. We'll telling take a ferry and stop through the Mediterranean, no. do some spots, and no. rent a car for a day or two in between. Mm -hmm. And and then yeah. I want to go to Newfoundland because I haven't been there yet, and it's so beautiful apparently. And every time I look at the pictures, I want to be there. And uh, and states, yeah, some just a road trip somewhere deeper into states because we have only like I have only been into uh, northern side, so probably states is the more tangible one for the summer, and hopefully Newfoundland in a close proximity to that. Nice. <laughs> All right. Yep, that's kind of. Yep. Newfoundland is very cool. I think like you guys would love there. You know the province Newfoundland. Yes. That would be the probably you guys out of Canada. You guys would have the most fun there because the people are so warm. 
they're there because it's still got that island feel to it you know it's i right. mean it's not as nice no, oh yeah yeah so you know they kind of a little more relaxed than everybody and i had a french friend who was going there and he was terrified because he barely could even say hello in english and he got off the ferry and he got to the first gas station about an hour in and he asked the guy, he said, I need power for my remark, which is trailer in French. And the guy said, because it was one of those gas stations with the house beside it. And the guy said, what's wrong? My house isn't good enough for you. And he thought he said it wrong in like his translation, but he didn't. He said, come on up to the house, park your trailer. We got power. We got water there. And when you want to have a meal, he ended up staying there for four days at that guy's house. He had fish cakes with them and stuff like that. And he came and went as he pleased. And she did his laundry before he left. And oh my gosh, they forbid to take any money from him. And Aww. yeah, nice. Lots of stories. You go to a bar in St. John's, Newfoundland. I mean, it's not a tiny town. It's probably, I don't know, maybe a hundred thousand or uh -huh. more. And I've gone there on business, sat at a bar, didn't know anybody. And the next thing you know, you're going to a house party with 30 other people, you know, wow. for hours. And they got the fiddles going. They got the guitars going. Everybody's stomping their feet. It's in somebody's house. The beer is flowing. and It's fun. It's a great place. Uh, one of my favorites, I think, in all of North America to go. Lots of it, moose. It, it's an island? Yep. Off off of the eastern Canada. It's about, a ferry ride is about seven hours, I guess. It's the most eastern point in North America. So we can take a ferry there. Yep. You go through Nova Scotia and you go up to what they call uh, Cape Breton. You go to the top of there and then you catch the ferry and it takes about, like I say, seven nice. hours. These are the kind of places I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really. Well, Maine good. is on his bucket list for sure. Maine so when is, we're yeah. there, you know, it's not that yeah. much further. Oh. It's a, you can take a ferry from uh, Bangor, Maine. It's one of those hydroplane ferries that takes you right over to Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia is absolutely breathtaking. You go through all the orchards and all that, all the way up. It's all apple blossoms everywhere. And... Nice. Well, if we get to Maine, we might go crazy and come out and see you guys. <laughs> well, I guess maybe, yes. We actually, we had few, uh, our friends from Saskatchewan were going all the way to uh, Newfoundland, Newfoundland. <laughs> as to say, in their RV. Uh, and they actually stopped over at our place for the yep. weekend and parked their RV on our street here. So. <laughs> Yeah. Always have place. <laughs> yep, you're always welcome. Just gotta get here. We'll take care of the rest. Yeah. Cool. Now we just stop here and say, "Hey, <laughs> that's right. Nice talking to you, bud." <laughs> <laughs> just honk the horn when you pass our house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, you're always welcomed. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, very much. Uh, I was. In, I was we've in... invited YouTubers to our place too, but now we're not there. <laughs> We're gonna catch you in your travels. <laughs> I was just showing them the other night. There was a, I brought that up a while ago. We were talking. That's me in my band days. Oh my god! Yeah, that's a million and a half years ago. That was taken. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! That was one of those hyper color shirts that we were talking about the other night that changed yeah. color when you got hot. They used to go by <laughs> probably every cancer causing agent into it at the time. How funny! <laughs> and that's my old drum kit there, and yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Right. That was my better one, not the one I bought for $200. <laughs> yeah. There you go. We had concerts, and there was our old... My mother kept my original ticket and stuff like that. Aww. Oh, cool. So, see, you know all about playing small gigs and, and medium-sized gigs. You, you know, we were in a small town, and we played in a place they call Maison des Jeunes, which is House of the Young, translates. And the guy that managed it, he was about our age, and he said, why don't you play the arena? We were in a town of about 3,000. And I'm like, sure, we'll play the Bell Center right after the big one in Montreal. We were laughing at him. And he set it up, and we got over a 1,000 people. We had a big truck come in. They rented with all the sound and lights. Sweet. But it was a small town, so people were like, you know, looking for something different. So then the town thought this was great for young people, and they asked us how much we made. We told them. We made $600 each because the manager got an equal cut, so six $600 checks and 400 in the bank. And the town paid us for another five shows over like five months. How cool. Yeah, it was yeah, fun. Cool. fun. 600 bucks each was a I, lot of money. Yes, <laughs> exactly. In 1992, like that was, I mean, we were yeah. killing it. Hey, babe, I made 600 bucks in there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we wanted a limo. We got sponsored by the beer company Labatt's was paying for all the stuff. Oh, oh man. Yeah, awesome. they made the posters and stuff. And it was, it was interesting. It was fun. We knew it wasn't going to go anywhere else. 
but it was fun. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's I so never thought, of, I, I did, I have to admit, I did think, you know, God, I'd love to make it. Yeah. And uh, in the reality and having kids and everything that, you know, I was, I knew in reality, this is probably it. So enjoy every hit, you know? Yeah, but you open for some pretty big bands and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. you went somewhere with it. I got very lucky. And, you know, I'm lucky, too, because Jane actually got to see the end of my career. She got to see my last probably 10, 15 gigs. Oh, Ooh, nice. So she got to see me performing. Yeah, different band. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, it was at Black cool. Sand at Black that Sand. time. Yeah. Oh, nice as that. That's amazing. So you were a groupie. <laughs> yeah. And she looked so hot. He was my leather jacket going, how do you like my girl? <laughs> yeah. You should still be saying that. She still yeah. looks hot. I, I do. I tell everybody, that's my wife. I just walk around the RV park. See that woman? That's my wife. <laughs> well, yeah. That's why I wrote her that song, I Love You. <laughs> oh, you so well, I knew a good thing when I, when, I mean, I wasn't going to blow this one. You know, I thought if I blow this, I'm done. <laughs> you know, I'm well, you. Uh, I got really lucky with Jane. And, because you're uh, lucky you got each other. I think you guys really opened the world up to each other. Yep, absolutely. We, you're right, and and we say that to each other. Even you know, we are so lucky to have met each other, um, because of uh, the things that we give to each other that the other one doesn't have. You know. Yep, that's right. That's and what's helped me so much, like with my music and and uh, you know. Um, she, she's just really helped me out. Jane has really helped me out. And uh, I'm a much better person today than I used to be. <laughs> well, you're um, one fantastic person. So she's definitely helped along the way. And I'm sure she feels the same way about you, yeah, too. We both have. Well, I appreciate I mean, we, that. We've helped each other in different ways. So, yeah. Different strengths. You know, that's a good, that's what a good relationship is built on is, you know, each partner brings their strengths and you complement each other. And, you know, it's, together it's, you're stronger. It's the yin yang effect, and I truly believe in that. I mean, it's not even a spiritual or religious thing; it's a human nature thing to do that. Mm -hmm. You make one superhuman on your own together. Yep. yep. You know. Yeah, and that's a powerful thing. It is. You hold, hold each other up when you're down, and all that, all that stuff. So, yeah. It's I love that. Good stuff. Yeah. You know, guys are very inspiring. <laughs> Yeah. And very sweet in the chat, people are saying, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I, yeah. I got to ask, and you can say no. Uh, will you play anything for us? I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, play, um, I'll play the Ballad of Ken and Jane. Love it. Perfect. Is that Before okay? Yours. Yes. Okay. I'm going to grab of his guitar. That's okay. All right. We're looking, I think a lot of people have been biting at the, the, the bit, waiting to hear. Yeah, I had questions in the chat before yeah. as well. It's, it's okay. okay. Move out of the way here. No, sit down. Stay there. <laughs> um, oh, remember, everybody. Two years. So Jane was walking around. We were sitting out there in the desert, and I just started. I love that chord D. You know I love you. What more can I say? You know I need you Every day, you know I like you You mean much to me, you know I need you Baby, can't you see? I'm out of my mind Don't ever leave, leave me behind Because I love you
some pictures on my PC screen of when I saw a pretty woman, she was wearing green, and I feeling kind of lucky, so I picked up the phone, and I was feeling so lonely, I was feeling alone. Now we've been together for a long, long time, and she finally said, boy, are you out of your mind? I'm a good-looking woman with a PhD, and I started to wonder what's the matter with me. We've been together for a long, long time. Went to dinner, and that was that. Yeah, we went to dinner and uh, that was then I could feel my heart go around it at that. Two years later, we got married by the sea and now I don't wonder what's the matter with me. Feel so good feeling like this again and that's the beginning of life with Ken and Jane, Ken and Jane. Ken and Jane. Ken and Jane, Ken and Jane. You know I love you, what more can I say? You know I need you, every day. You know I like you, you mean what you mean. You know I need you, baby can't you see? I'm out of my mind. Don't ever leave me behind. Cause you mean so much to me Someday I'm gonna marry you down by the sea Probably in Hawaii over there in Maui Or whatever the heck it is, yeah Because I love you Card, but you didn't know, did you? <laughs> Philip did, though. <laughs> Philip's been cheering you on the whole time. Yes, <laughs> you guys gotta go after and look in the chat. Tim's and... Brew, and I love what Jackie wrote here. I that really caught my eye. She wrote, "Proud to say he's my brother." Aww. that is so amazing. Okay, tears roll down my face. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, mean, I think I was one step away from. I was trying yeah. to caught my eye, and I kept going back to it. Yeah. Well, Peace. there you go. Thank you so yeah. much. Uh, yeah, people were enjoying it. My God, <laughs> people were putting the lighting <laughs> lighters out and dancing. And oh my God, uh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, Hosier said, "Yeah, to excuse me, I got to dance." And uh, yeah, Panic D waving lighter. Yeah, a tea throg as well. Yeah, everybody. You know when you're strumming, you know who you strum like. And I don't even no. know. If realize that you actually have a style kind of like neil young i have been told that yeah. yes someone yeah. said you sound like neil young and i'm like well thank you <laughs> <laughs> your strumming technique though in your chord that i was thinking that way you were playing have you thought of recording things like that you are creating now and with the guitar that you play now yes but you know tra we actually bought a, a little uh Studio, studio yeah. from Focusrite, and oh. it was so complicated, and we were trying to leave. We couldn't get it online. There were so many things you had to do, and uh, and I got frustrated and left. 
Yeah. And I love it because I can put backup tracks, you know, and I can put in, you know, in yep. some or, you know, uh, you know, fill in a little bit of a lead. I'm just starting oh, to God. learn lead. And I play harmonica well. I that's I played I sang and played harmonica, you know. Oh. Um, and uh, I'm starting to learn lead, which is really hard because I wrote down the pentatonic scales and whoo, you know, but you know, the longer you do it, the better you get. I think you're gonna have a lot of fans, uh, you know, uh, wanting to, to listen to your music more and more because we're enjoying it. There's a chat full of people enjoying it and you see in your videos too, uh, there are lots of people going back to your videos with your songs on. Uh, well, so we have a playlist of songs too, you know. Yeah, we put the original music in a playlist, a separate playlist. Yeah, yeah. Find it. Well, uh, I think uh, you know if if if, re if you ever uh, do get back to recording it, <laughs> uh, there's definitely an audience for it. And uh, honestly, for recording, if you want to put some tracks down while you're traveling, you'd be surprised what a cell phone or a tablet and just getting like a little decent mic to plug into it will yeah, pick up. Especially well, the iPad. Uh, yeah. Today, the way they work, and you get a decent mic, you can always thicken the sound up later on when you go back yeah. and you find it a little higher on the tin. Did that stuff. sound okay? What I did? Did it sound? Oh good? yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I thought about for recording for yourself. You can take it home and then lay it down on your tracks when you get back home. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, when I get back home, I'm going to get that. Uh, we'll get the studio we'll get going. get the studio going so I can put harmonica and backup vocals. And uh, by then, hopefully, I'll be able to play some lead, you know. Yeah. yeah. It comes and, with time. I wanted to play the real thing, but... Uh, I messed it up earlier, so I don't know if I can do it. And if I fooled up myself up on, you know, this chat, I would feel very silly. But wow, here we go. you ready? <coughs> it's floor's yours. You're always walking when you're talking, never thinking what you're saying, or the feelings of the people that you hurt. And we go out to a party, and you really party hardy. You disappear in the sound of your own voice. And I know I should know better, but I hold on to your sweater. I see a wallflower standing alone. And I want to walk up to her just like I knew her. Look in her eyes. Make me a wish. I'm wishing on a real thing. One that will be true. I'm wishing on a real thing. I'm wishing on someone exactly not like you. You can keep all your silver. You can keep all your gold. You can keep up out of everything and the lies that you told. You tell me that you're leaving me. I don't care about that. You say that you need more money. You done spent all of my cash. You say I ain't good looking enough. I can't do nothing about that. Wish I was a one-night stand. Girl, get out of my life. Oops. Because I'm looking for the real thing. One that will be true. Yeah, I'm looking for the real thing. Somebody 
exactly not like you. You're always walking when you're talking, never thinking what you're saying. The feelings of the people you hurt. You know, got you a party and you really party, party. Disappear in the sound of your voice. I know I should know better, but I hold on to your sweater. I see a wallflower standing alone. I want to walk up to her and just like I knew her. Look in her eyes. Make me a wish. I'm wishing on a real thing. One that will be true. I'm wishing on a real thing. I'm wishing on someone exactly not like you. What were you worried about? Yeah. Uh, well, I fouled up a couple times, but since nobody knows the song, you know, it's like Jane knows. She's going, oh, my God, how do you say that? Uh, <laughs> no, he's going to screw up again. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, people are saying you've got to upload a song so you can buy them and listen mm -hmm. to them on Twitter. Well, you can go over to Ken and Jane's uh, channel, and they have a playlist of the songs that they have uh, uh, yep. recorded, uh, on the video Original music by Ken. Yeah. Original music by Ken, yeah. That uh, you said you're starting to learn to pick and do a little bit of soloing and that. And I see you doing it. You're already well on your way. Well, I'm I'm working on it. I you know, I have a terrible habit if I can go out at ten o'clock in the morning and come in at eight o'clock at night still mm. playing. I love it, you know. I love to make music, you know, and it's hard in this little bus because it'll drive Jane crazy when I go over the same three chords 14 times just trying to get it right, you Earpl know. Earplugs. Earplugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Headphones. <laughs> yeah. I say, sing along, Janie. Go for it, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I do the same. I even drive myself crazy. I get so angry at it. That's me, though. I, I don't know. I kind of. I, I, I it, it drives me insane. It's like trying to relearn a language that you already know. And it's like, why won't your fingers listen to your brain or vice versa? It's like they're always in a fight. And one doesn't want to hear what the other one got to say. Well, I found out. It's like I was trying to do the real thing. And I, 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 I thought, oh, I can whip that out. No problem. So Jane said, well, pretend like this screen <laughs> is, is on when you're playing, you know. So I did. And I kept looking at the screen and I'd screw everything up. So I made real positive I didn't look over there at you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think you did pretty good myself. Well, I hope it sounded okay because you know it's like it's like taking all your clothes off and dancing around. <laughs> you know, it's like I'm sorry, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> Very vulnerable. Yes. yes, I'm like that too. I find it hard to play like on here, like we did it one night, and I find it very hard. I find it very intimidating for some reason. I don't know. I think I, that if you did it for a, a few songs, you would actually calm down. Oh yeah. That you're, you know, like, oh, I'm with friends and calm yeah. down. Forget, oh, there's actually people out there judging me. <laughs> My sister's out there, for God's sakes. <laughs> well, you nailed it. You did it. Yeah, it, it came out okay. I just hope it sounded all right. And for like picking, especially like the chords you're using, that if you can just pick in between the notes and the chords itself and adding like you're doing the little tap ons and trills. And if you learn the uh, major uh, pentatonic scales, and those are quite easy because it's the same scale the whole way up the neck. You Although, just, yeah, you know. I found that out just yep. two days ago. I went, oh, <laughs> G, sure. it's the same as A. That's right. I to Jane, she goes, do you like it when I talk pharmacy to you? Yeah, my <laughs> <I> eyes go, <laughs> are great. <laughs> He goes, I hate it. <laughs> Do you like it when I talk pharmacy stuff to you? 
Yeah. She had to take this course to get a license in Arizona, yeah, even though take, she'd been doing it forever. I had to take the national boards mm. when I was, you know, 50 something years old. So. Unbelievable. But yeah, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> well, I would sit there and go, what the hell is that? <laughs> It starts with an X and ends with a Y. <laughs> this, yeah, the, 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 I took an online course. She goes, That's it's an one. aspirin, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> she does that when I talk about stuff like that. She'll go on. I'm like, you don't understand. She'll answer me by going, okay, then when you make a souffle, what kind of pan do you need? And what kind of eggs do you put in? And everything like, okay, I get <laughs> exactly it. We both have our same thing. same thing, you know? Yeah, you know? <laughs> um, have you the scales? Have you seen how they have you done some of them yet? Like going up the fret? Because if you start, I'm, you know, I'm you have to, to learn that right now. Really? Um, I'm, you know, the D one is so easy. You know, yep. D, E, you know, you know, D, E, F, you know, uh, G, A, whatever, B, C, you know. Because from that, you'll learn also, you'll, you'll, from there, the, the scale, you'll also get the same. If you put all the fingers together, you pretty much get the bar chord. And if you right. go most of your fingers, you'll have the power chord, which they use in most rock songs. So you get a scale, a chord, and a, a two chords out of it. So two for the three for the price of one. You know what's killing me? That A bar. <laughs> a is a hard one, yeah. A is a hard one. Yeah. But I also said the same thing out of the C major chord. I, for, as soon as I got to it, I went, I'll never be able to play this. And now you do it in your sleep, you know. It's like easy, you know. But I'm going to get that A bar. It's the callus on your fingers. Once everything's calloused up and that thing's come into place, you're able to press the, the proper amount that you need that you don't get ring. And you're golden after that. It's just getting – it hurts while it's getting to that point. Yeah. Oh, mine are my, – I had a callus completely fall off. It was yeah. – it was huge, and I'm like, "Whoa, I lost my callus." And, and it wasn't fun playing the day after, was it? Yeah, <laughs> but it's actually getting to where the calluses are wearing down, and I don't feel anything in these fingertips anymore. Well, you're there, so you're you've yeah. basically you're at that point. So, you know, things to fall. It's a lot easier. That's what sickens a lot of people when they first learn guitar is the pain of learning it. Yeah. More than learning the chords, more than learning the fingering, then they, it turns them off from it. And if they can just get over that hump, it does get a lot easier. Well, I love the aha feeling, you know, when you yeah. do something, you go, oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, you know, and you do it for about a day later, you know, <laughs> all day. Oh, you'll wear it in your brain, you'll never forget it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that sounded good. I'm going to do that to the whole song. <laughs> in fact, I'm not going to do nothing but that. <laughs> Do you have your guitar close to you? Yeah, I do. Hang on one sec. <laughs> Music Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't played this thing. I hope it's even in two. Okay, here we go. Close enough. Uh, are you coming back or do you want me to turn and then go? There we go. No, I'm going to sit up. It's easier with this. I'm just going to turn the camera yep. over side. There we go. It'll be easier. All righty. So, for instance, G, okay? G. Oh, we're even tuned together. We're both at 440. Yeah. There you go. So your scale, this is a bar chord. So this is G, but then this is G, too. Bar chord. And you Where bar all the chords. Bar all the third chord. But that's a very tricky one. I'll send you a picture of that one after. What I want to show you was because that's also G. You take your finger in the third fret and then go to the sixth and you go up, skip two frets. So start on the third top string and then go to the sixth. You're starting a scale, and that's where all your guitar picking will be a lot of the time on the lower side if you're in G. Man, that's a long reach, dude. Yeah, it is. One, two. But it gets easier after that. That's the only hard one. And after that, you only skip one fret. Then the same thing on the next string. Right. 
you skip two at the bottom. And then you only skip one. And then skip two at the top. And you just start working with that. Are you starting on the third fret? Yep, third fret and then to the sixth. And start soloing right over it just by using those notes if you don't know what to play <laughs> right i mean if you were the second guitar player <laughs> that's right i'll strum and you play see oh no 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 i'll strum you play <laughs> <laughs> i haven't played this one a long time and the strings definitely need to be changed <laughs> And dusty, holy jeez! We had construction in here. I didn't realize how dusty my guitar was. <laughs> well, that, I I've heard that before, and I I'd love to be able to play that. I'm working right now completely on the pentatonic, you know. Well, that's good. And there's some, uh, I got one guy that does a good job of showing them step by step, and I'll send it to you. And you can like if you want to do F, you start on the first fret. If you want to do G, it's here. If you want to do B, it's here. It's the same thing over and over and over, just moving up one fret each time. Yeah. got me playing again i haven't played in ages i got no calluses you're gonna have to get me <laughs> so borrow one finger one finger yeah or you want to borrow a chord no i was just saying you can borrow one of my fingers oh borrow one of your fingers oh my god i'm taking the whole hand <laughs> i'm greedy <laughs> oh my god it was uh... and you can play like like finger picking a lot of people ask about it and i'm not as good as i used to be but that's just basically just holding your like your D, you said you like D a lot. Just leave your pick in your corner of your finger here and just start going between the notes. And, like an old Merle Haggard style, you know? Well, I imagine your your uh, 
the people on the internet are probably going, why are they doing this? <laughs> no, they seem to be. <laughs> they seem to be playing it. Yeah. They seem to be happy. <laughs> What's that one? It's a what's that one? Uh, it's time that Janie and I picked up and wrong. Cause we know somewhere out there there's a, a whole lot of fun. We went left and Andrew went right. Man, we had ourselves a real, real fun night in a magic bubble. You're in the driver's seat. I'm just following. Oh, great. <laughs> I was driving? You were driving. Oh, you're no. wheel. <laughs> oh, my God, kid, you're so amazing. I'm learning a new song, and it's, it's going to be fun. song i'm writing that sounds good i like um, it. yeah well the words are a little rough but um it's about heroin addiction oh, really? <laughs> i don't know if i want to put it on the channel <laughs> yeah, it's about so many kids today that are i keep reading about i'm overdosing left and right and how many kids that are just uh rich or poor or whatever are getting yeah. hooked on heroin because it's so cheap well yeah it doesn't discriminate that drug so I'm basically writing it for parents, you know, keep an eye on your kid because there's a stranger in town and we call him heroin. Wow. That's amazing. And you can see him on every corner of the street and dark back alleys, you know, he's everywhere. He's in your school. He's around the corner. He comes in a small little bindle and he don't cost very much and your kids, he'll steal your children's soul. But that's part of it. 
Oh. I need a cigarette um, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not so cheery, but <laughs> yeah, not so cheery. Jane goes, I don't know about that. You know? <laughs> You're talking about people's children being hooked on heroin. I'm going, yeah, but what if I save one? <laughs> exactly. That's no, I think you got a lot of message you want to get out to people, and it's your way to do it is through songs. So I think that's pretty, uh, pretty commendable. Well, <clears throat> actually, I think it's going to be a pretty good song when I finish it, you know, oh, but it's right. taking some work. And I'm having to learn, it's pushing me to learn more things, and it's yeah. pushing me to get those fingers right behind that, uh, you know, right behind that fret. Yeah, you know, not in the middle. Get it right behind that fret, and you do it every time. Yeah, that's better. I was wondering why we, I was trying to figure out why we had this black edge on our camera, and I forgot that I turned it a while ago. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 well, I, I hope I didn't turn anybody off out there. I'm no, 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 my God. No, I forget. I think I'm in this bus alone, and you guys are hanging out right in the chair. <laughs> I love this, guys. You guys are what the show is all about. I mean. We've said from the beginning that we're a very small piece of the puzzle, Xenia and I. It's you guys and the, the chat that are 85% of what we do here. I mean, you guys make it, and then you're a great, another great example of it tonight. The fun, fun forum. Well, it's this a, has been a nice blast. Yeah. I mean, this has been an absolute blast. And, and who would have known? I'm sitting out there after driving for so long, and I turn on the uh, – because we hadn't had any Wi-Fi. Right. Turn on – the internet and it popped up that you guys were on and i went okay let's see what they're doing you know next thing i know <laughs> your show. we wrote people in yeah we're good at that <laughs> hey you want some candy little boy oh let God. me send you a little link here <laughs> now we're gonna end up in these songs i hope they happen <laughs> i'm gonna talk about the evil youtubers <laughs> yes. it's just a little couple of words you need to press <laughs> Really good. They act like a sweet couple, but they will. Oh, hi, my name's Ken, and I'm a push addict. <laughs> oh, God. It started out innocently after driving all day, and I sat down at the picnic table. The next oh. thing I knew, I need addiction. <laughs> It was Andrew. <laughs> Here, little boy, try some candy. Just oh my right God. There. You just made it into the best of moments that when we put it together. <laughs> <laughs> There's your sound bite. Oh, my God. No, but this was what it was supposed to be. And I found like the dredge was getting there. And I don't want to get into all the politics. So it was just the part was we were all working hard to get noticed. And that's great. And we did have to. But it felt like something was kind of missing, and we did the live stream and just to try like, to say thank you for hitting a thousand, and that's what we wanted. Like we didn't want to do something just for the sake of building up watch time and waste everybody's time. And you know, we've gotten to know each other. And we kept saying that, like you know, we're watching all these videos, we're talking, but we don't really know more about them because whatever you put on video is still not the whole story. Right. You guys share a lot, but there's still even more to you guys that you know not everything makes it. And that was kind of the idea of doing this was just let's all get if you if watch somebody for an hour and a half or more talking about themselves, you're going to be more likely, I think, to have people who follow you that will be there for years because they got that connection. It's like sitting down for supper for, you know, to meet somebody. Right. Yeah, it's the next level to it. And, yep, it is. You know, yeah. and, that's, you know? and that's that's I think for me, that's the bottom line here. You know, yeah. it's about the thousand and the four thousand hours and right. all that stuff. Yeah, it's about meeting people and connecting yeah. with people and different ideas and different, you know, just different perspectives on life. And you know, um, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. It um, does. Eh? It really opens your eyes to a lot really of things. It does. It does. And that's great. I mean, the world is becoming so divided at this moment in time. It's nice to have something that still feels universal. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, yep. well, that's, that's for sure, and that's part of why we don't really watch the news anymore. Is like, it's yeah. all about division. It's all about making us uh, angry with, you know, these people are mad at these people. And yes, like you know, it's it's not about that. No, I, I agree, hundred percent. Life is about life is about you know coming together and finding a common bond and um you know. Well, I have old friends that won't even talk to me anymore because of the way I dress. 
and they they think, well, he's one of them. And it's like, I've never seen anything like this before, but let's not go there. Let's not go to politics. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just get, go to the positive side, which is, right. yeah. you know. Let's go to the positive side. Let's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, yeah. really, that's what it's about, you know? It but is. Yeah, it is. We've found you know, on YouTube so many great friends. It amazes me right now how things can be div so divisive when there's we've never had more tools in our life to be more inclusive. Absolutely, yeah. You know? Like, looking in the yeah. chat tonight, look at you guys. I mean, we're all over the place. We're strung out everywhere, but yet we're all here. We're, I tell people, we take it for granted, we're broadcasting. This didn't happen just a couple of years ago, unless you had to spend, you know, a hundred grand on computer equipment right. to make this happen, or more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, you can actually share documents that you're showing. I mean, that was a big thing a couple of years ago that people wanted you couldn't really do. We can talk to each other on the fly. It's not just Skype yeah. anymore. You can have a full chat running. You can have people mm -hmm. join in that you didn't invite. It, it's an incredible age to live in. Yep. It really is. And and it's like, you know, why did I start this YouTube channel? And when I found out it's free, you can join this and do this yep. and make up little things for free. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm in. Yeah. You know? Sign me and up. Then I joined during the apocalypse. Yeah. Which was yeah. Like, when we had no idea what was going on. No I thought, clue. God, everybody likes me. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming from all around the world saying, will you sub me? Oh, hell, I'm, I'm so popular. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> and then I found out, oh. <laughs> There's a catch here, right? Yeah. <laughs> they won't watch you and they unsubscribe. <laughs> well, we had As no they idea. do in droves. <laughs> we didn't even know that people made money. Yeah. No, we didn't. We had no idea. We were clueless. Yeah, we just. And then this, this ad apocalypse came on, and I was like, uh -oh. "This feels a little <laughs> yeah. weird." So we just decided to stay to ourselves, keep making as nice a videos as we can, and as creative as we possibly can. And yeah. we're never going to make a living off of this. This is not a job. When it becomes a job, I'm out of here. Yeah. You know. So. It's a. Uh... It's what, like, I mean, we've never lied to the beginning. We said when we came back, because we only had like 42 subscribers, we wanted to monetize because it is still a business outside of here. And the whole point was for when people type in Pusha Studio in the Montreal area, that our name came up more. But I've told people, you know, you kind of pinch your nose a bit. We went through the drudgery, and after a thousand, that's when things got really tight. I always say, go to, if that's what you want to do, get to 1100. But after that, start getting really selective because the other ones are going to go anyways, they're going to be gone. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. They're just filler, you know? But, I mean, to get a 1,000 to be able to compete, it's like, okay, everybody's the Wild West. Join on. Yes, and watch. Nobody can watch all your videos, even if they tried. Right. right. And I don't yeah. lose sleep over them. But now I'm very – like, if I go on your channel, because I'm taking yours as an example that I like, now I start looking – and I only do it every two weeks. I'll start looking. I'll watch a video and go, well, they're a good channel, so they must have good subscribers. So let's go back three months, four months before all this crap started. Who was watching them back then before this all took off? My now mom. We'll look at their channels. <laughs> yeah, because you guys are right. Yeah, you guys are right. At, like you say, sort of the, the thick of it. So, yeah. But that's how we were building now. And I mean, it's paid off well. I mean, it's harder now at the live stream because we are doing it six nights a week. It is harder yeah. to get to watch some. Well, that's got to be hard. Yeah. Talking to someone like me six nights a oh. week. I love this part. This part yeah, I love. Yeah, this is amazing. It's the bookings. Like, people don't realize, you know, we're not getting paid. You guys aren't getting paid, and they're right. still, like, you got to do bookings. A lot of work. Cancel. That's why we hit people in the live stream. We have a cancellation because we don't have enough time to work in somebody else. We need an answer. Like, we got craft beer pours the other week. We caught them on Memorial Day weekend with their kids in Massachusetts. They've thought about coming on. They were nervous. And I'm like, hey, guys, what are you up to tonight? And I heard a whisper. I think he wants us on tonight. And I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> you nailed it. We had a cancellation. Yeah. Well, that's like what you did to me. Yeah. You know, ambush. You am it sucked me in. Come here, little boy. <laughs> well, uh, it's so hard to get you guys. <laughs> on Push this magic little button. That's the way. 
<laughs> but it was meant to be. It was meant. Yeah, it was meant to be. You're right. You had you days know? with no internet. You come back on and look what happened. Yeah. And I it. even liked it. I went, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Jane. Yeah. Look, we're talking to people I, in Canada. I didn't even know we were live, actually. When yeah, she came out, I had no clue. Oh. You know, we yeah. were talking tonight. I had no idea. I was just like, no, no, no. She goes, it was nice talking to them. They're really nice people. And I go, yeah. And there was, you know, people in the audience. She goes, what? <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't know that. Yeah, she had no idea. Uh, <laughs> That's too well. You did a great job. Look on that, you're natural. No, I'm, I'm so happy. We're so happy to got, have you on, guys, because it's yeah. so hard to get you on internet. And we've been talking back and forth about it uh, yeah. through, since you started this journey. And, and so it's it's great to have you on when you are on finally. And I want to thank you guys for the support right from the beginning. You guys were one of those supporters that stayed with us. And I hope you know this. I know with the live stream sites, we don't get to watch as many videos as we wish we could. But I mean, that we're trying to do at least offer, but and we do try. And if we ever miss one of your videos and you want to see it, please just send it out to us. Send us a link, send us a message on Twitter. We'll be right. How can you watch everybody's video? You can't. You yeah, can't. you can't. You or can't. you get those people that go, wow, great video. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Love you your know, video. You oh, this. that was awesome. <laughs> you, yeah. you know, we do a promo video every day, like you've seen, right? It's one minute long, and it's just like today was you guys' picture, the thumbnail with the music right. on at 8 o'clock tonight. I don't know how many times I get somebody, wow, really love what you're doing here. That caught my eye. Keep up the great work. Amazing shot. It's like, yeah, yeah. you really watched it, didn't you? <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you get to where you can tell who is and who isn't. Yeah. Yes. You know? And it doesn't matter. You know, like I said, if we get real serious about this and this becomes a job, we're not going to be having fun. That's so right. Keep exploring yeah, exactly. and traveling and making videos and being our quirky selves. Yep. I, I tell people right now, God forbid if you ever get noticed here, you're one of the millions that I'm one of the million one in a million that gets to shoot up to start them here. Because you're not gonna enjoy it anywhere near what you do. Like enjoy this time right now. Absolutely. Right. Because there's nothing to lose, nobody's on your back, you don't have to worry about sponsors, you don't have to worry about keeping up the ratings. Right. This is the golden time. Absolutely. You well, know? this is really what we want to do. <laughs> yeah. And you're doing it. It's amazing. Like, you're growing by just doing what you love. Yep. Absolutely. Four more, and we're going to be at 1,100. We're, you're, we're right yeah. up. Oh, <laughs> one second. Well, you are at 1,100. On we my, are? On my screen. Oh, is that, are they? On oh, you moved up. <laughs> you refresh it. <laughs> well, you yeah. got us to 1,000. So that's, that's two, two ones and two zeros. Let's see here. Oh, awesome. I'm bringing it up. I'm going right to the live feed to check live subscriber count. Gonna take a second to update, of course. Drum roll, please. You guys are 1100 on the dot. <laughs> Good stuff. Anytime oh. you need a hundred, just come see us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a fun time. Yeah. Well, I said oh. we're we're um, one thousand ninety five, right? We were one thousand ninety one ninety six. Yeah. There you go. I said, well, maybe we'll pick up a couple uh, tonight, you know, and we'll get to uh, eleven hundred. Won't that look cool? One point one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy for you guys. It's so well deserved. Yeah, it's, and, and, uh, people that come from our chats are usually very supportive, and they come back and yeah. actually uh, enjoy the videos. So uh, I'm glad you gained some more fans because yeah. you really have a very inspiring, light-hearted videos yes. and, and great music. Yeah, yeah right. we're we're really having fun. You guys are the break from the day-to-day -day stuff that everybody needs. That's what yous are. Thank you. People Thank need you. videos sure. like this. Thanks. All right. Guys, can't thank you enough for being on tonight. You've been so generous with your yes. time. <clears throat> Pardon me. Thank you. I don't know what else to say. It's just been so nice to finally sit down and really get to talk with you guys. This has yeah. been such a pleasure. Yeah, it's been great. Thank you so much. And be safe on your travels. 
document lots and uh maybe we'll sometime through it we can do this again update yeah. where you are shoot us well, a cool. if you can where are you so we know that you're safe always like to yeah. have <laughs> we'll shoot you a little message here and there and you know we're still alive yeah, we're thinking about <laughs> you yes yeah All right. we're gonna yeah. take you guys take care of yourself Bye. well Thank you. Bye. So Thank nice you. for tonight. Take care. All the best, Bye. guys. Thank you so Thanks. much. We really, really enjoyed ourselves. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> you guys are fun. That means the world to us. Take care. Bye, Bye now. now. How do I go home? <laughs> I got you. Oh, that was so amazing. And the damn session and everything. That's just so exciting. Oh, Butterfly is here. Yes, because I wasn't looking all the way. Yeah, I've seen them, yeah. <laughs> Welcome, oh Butterfly. God. Yeah, no, that was nice tonight. That's when, like, but like Brooke and Rick, and you know, we're all kind of from that beginning time, so it's nice to uh, once in a while get to do this. That was really cool. Yeah, it was just, so so great, you know, just get to know them more and yeah. uh, their background more, and, and and just you know, just chill out on a Saturday night and listen to our music and so relaxing and nice. Janet, you take care. It was nice to have you here. We miss you. Good to see you. And you take care of yourself. Always, always good to see you when yeah. you can. So enjoy your weekend. Then. You're always welcome. And but uh, oh, Rick is and uh, you're both together, Rick. Yeah, there. Uh, there. That's nice. Uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah. There's such an amazing call. We ambushed them like you said the other night. We had a cancellation. So yeah. And they've been on in days. Yeah, uh, we had been talking before when they just started their journey out uh, from their home location. We were talking about getting them on, but internet was spotty and it was hard to get them on the good internet but uh it, it was meant to be we had a kind of uh, change of plans with our initial guest for today yeah. and and they happened to climb out of their wilderness as i said yeah. <laughs> so it was a great combination uh, thank you so much and thank you for their sister to be yes. such an active participant jackie uh in here that uh, was very amazing to have family members and their kids as well Yes, that was very uh, yeah. cool. I thought that was so amazing. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kelvin Climbers here. He says I had a late night listening to uh, to this today. Well, I know for you it is a late night. <laughs> that's very. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was worth staying up for. Yeah, that's that's uh, really nice to see. I know it's not easy for you guys with the time change and that. We are in a hard time for certain areas, especially in Europe and that. But we really do appreciate it. Um, I uh, hope that Butterfly, Brooke, and Rick is going to feel better soon. You guys have oh, been God. sick for a while there. Last time we talked with you guys, you were sick. Yes. Is it still from that time? or Or it's a new one? I don't know what you guys are doing there. Maybe they just want to stay in bed. Or... I think so. That's I. You know, you know, Brooke, that she's quick to throw up. The, the, uh, the yeah. is when it comes to bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> The, the, the honeymoon phase. Yeah. Just want to stay in oh, it's a honeymoon time. fever they got. That's oh, what they got. yeah. Honeymoon fever. That's what they got. You. Ooh, yeah. Guys, I don't know. Yeah. I um, heard negligees bring that on. So you know. I didn't get worried about you guys. This is, oh, they this say it's is a like new one. Third time in the last month. Yeah. I hope, the, I hope because Annie and I have the flu after this is over. It's the live stream. Oh my God! You're burning up. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> there, there's a little view into foreplay, people. <laughs> That's his bird. I don't know what mine could be. Uh, I don't know when you were right here now. when I actually presented him with an actual potato bag uh, and it was wrapped around with a nice bow. I'm thinking to appreciate that. They ask for so potato sack, and when you give them one, they just throw it away. I want to appreciate it. Another glimpse into our life. You got to see foreplay and humor right here. That's what keeps our power. <laughs> <laughs> Step over you is so sweet. Uh, I see she said she got a new computer at the end of the month. Yeah, because she said she wanted to jump in with her guitar tonight. I said, oh, no, come on, baby. That's right. I want to see you, girl. We're but, holding uh, you to it now. We want you on. Yeah, so. but no, she's getting upgrades. Yeah. So different types of upgrades at the end of the month. So excited to see you on Twitter finally so I can shoot a message <laughs> and bug you with my messages. How are you doing girl? Girl power. Yes. No, you've got, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Steph, you're so sweet by the way. That was a fun way to do it. Yeah. 
That was nice. Yeah, it was so night. awesome. Mm-hmm. It was such a chill night. It literally just felt like, you know, like sometimes you guys have, uh, when you have your friends over to your parents' house, yeah. or you guys just flood the car at one of your friends uh, down home. It just kind of felt like that, you know. Uh, it's so dirty, um, like oh, a, yeah. so filthy. Yeah, we had the contractor, like I said, here, and uh, I put it that way, uh, way, but I guess it covered enough. And I don't know if you can see, but the dust is just like rampant. Up. You, you, you brush it off, I think most of it can't really see. Oh, god, girl power, Philip says, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Philip, you, uh, you could just leave us and take it over with them or what. Well, we were talking the other day that uh, we need more girls uh, that are kind of start to feel lonely sometimes. And there are more men on, but that is why I appreciate you, girls. And Philip. <laughs> well, I was hoping you would play something. I am playing something. Well, let's not. Thank you so much for coming today. We're not going to be on tomorrow. Uh, Sunday. But we're going to be back on Monday. Uh, with uh, three guys that craft beer. They've been really neat, guys. Uh, three friends that do beer reviews uh, in Philadelphia, beer. right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. they make beer exactly. They do reviews of the beer. Yeah. Exactly. Three guys, three friends making beer. Almost... Uh, no, yeah. no, no, no. We're, this is the same one. Uh, no, same one. You missed uh, some singing. We had uh, Ken singing and playing, and then Andrew tuned in with uh, his guitar too. So we had a little bit of jam session. If you want to check out that later on, when I talk a little bit about it. And is it the best, best time, best time? So. And uh, uh, Patsy stopped by on her way to bed. So hello, Patsy. How are you? I thought I could get through this. Unbelievable. <laughs> and yeah, guys, this is yeah. Uh, this is uh in in July. We're gonna be on a little bit more sporadically. We're gonna be taking a little um, vacation time here. Here and now and home. Uh, so these are our last two weeks of the scheduled time slot before we take the push in. Um, so come on by, get your dose of push live. Oh, hi, Patsy. <laughs> oh, goodness. That sentence, Patsy, is just driving him like completely nuts. I don't know what you're doing, girl. Can you play Twinkie? Oh, Twinkle Twinkle. I thought it was Twinkie Twinkie because Susie was here. <laughs> but it was an old Twinkie or Snowball. How about some of these dream songs? I'm not saying it. No way. Can I sing? No. I, I, uh, I really don't know if that's all it's worth. Oh my god, that's me. The name that's me. I don't know what folks. Hey, well, it's pretty bad. Well, I tried to sign into back into chat. I got booted out, so. Um, uh, yeah, thank, thank you so much, Susie. Uh, the dinosaur thing. I, I thought it's a dinosaur now, apparently. I'm a loser. I think it the other day that Susie came. Oh. Uh, but thank you for the lizard. I thought it was a dinosaur. It was very cute. <laughs> the dancing me. Is your problem? <laughs> oh my god. Or uh, Neil Young's old man, we could say. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Very good.
that you will need to protest. What did I miss? Oh, you simply can't log back no. in the chat. No, 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 oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Benjamin was awesome hanging with you tonight. And once again, I left the baby sleeping well, and you guys get to uh, uh, sleep and then you get to enjoy time. So, Alba was asking for a balsam prison. Oh, shit. I like the <laughs> Oh, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I wasn't. Yep, Neil Young, I'm thinking, you know what I was thinking of, because Canada Day is coming up in a little bit, maybe I'm doing a little montage to some of them, I know we'll never get monetized or anything, I don't really care, as long as we don't get a hard copyright strike, but I wish, I see if it's possible to put uh, some of them up. Yes, so, tomorrow. Like Neil Young and stuff like that. There's a lot of great music came out of Canada, especially the folks, uh, you know, uh, them, him, uh, Tony Mitchell. Uh, I just said his name a while ago, the record of the Edmund Fitzgerald for the love of God. Uh, Gordon oh, Lightfoot. No, 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 no. Don't get all crazy there. <laughs> you can tell by the look in your eye. <laughs> I'm calling my eye. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is a, that's a beautiful lullaby. It is. It's a touching song. I might start to cry halfway through it. So, in the woods, a uh, great guest tonight. But I better head over to one of the other streams now. Thank you, Ken and Jane, for being on the stream tonight, and thank you, people. Thank you so much, Wolfie. Yes, Wolfie. It's so great to have you here. I put your amazing words once you landed in our stream out in the Twitterverse. I just love it so much. Look, once I would have, I told you she's like, yeah. she's probably got Rick in there in some sort of wrapped up in leather thing. That's what they call <laughs> sick. That's what they call sick. That's their name for it. Oh, Rick is sick again. <laughs> the ball of the mouth. <laughs> I can see that with both. All nice and happy and that, but she's got a, she's got a wild side to her. Yeah, Patsy, and you take care of yourself, dear. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. And yeah, it's pretty much the same time to call it a night. Yeah. Uh, just uh, doing your OCD for two minutes. Should have said I never even listened. <laughs> no. I think it's gonna be too funny. I was just thinking you were going to bust him all the school town of cash. I'll redeem myself on that one. Yeah. 
Guys, I want to I want to leave you with a link tonight, and I would really like you to check this out. You know him from back in the day. Oh. Huh? He said he can play anything. I said pretty much anything. And then he said, "Yeah, I know him from back in the day." Back in the day. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I read there. Uh, Phyllis is going to be playing one. Uh, what's, is going to be having a um, video tomorrow morning or the morning paper. Oh. So that's, I think that's going to Excellent. Play. Yeah, Toto. Yeah, of course. Always. Uh, we know that. No, but really? When you played with bands. Really? I didn't go too far with bands, so if you knew me from there, we were... Wow. These are the, the, the Toto songs. Really interesting combination. Hey, Rick. Hey, how are you? Are you here or is it Brooke pretending to be you to show us that you're not somewhere? <laughs> yeah. up in it. How much can you play it before it's a copyright strike? 30 seconds, I think. I think it is. Eh? I'm going to give you guys this link. I'm just going to play a tiny, tiny piece of this. This is one of the most amazing things I've ever heard. And this is a, uh, an acapella band, a group, excuse me, from uh, Slovenia. And they do a cover of a bunch of songs. And one of the most incredible shows, I would love to go see these guys live. Uh, just play on the time bit, but I'll put the link in for you. <laughs> But they do the opening scene and they do like the rain and the, the thunder and you hear the rain starting. Anyways, yeah, because I don't want to get a copy straight, but I want to give you guys a link. You should really check these guys out. They also do, uh, what is it, Greece? Uh, oh, they do a whole bunch of yeah. things, actually. They had, I think, a Footloose. Tour. Footloose yeah. is the other big one they did. They got picked up and they had a tour that year. Yeah, they traveled. They did a world tour. Yeah. They got North America and they wanted to travel much through Europe. Yeah, since then, um, 
be always taking as well. That one of the most <laughs> impressive things I've seen, and that's usually not my type of thing, like the complete polar opposite of my type of thing, but that opening alone where they do like the the, the, the rain and then they jump in unison and create like the going through the, uh, the domino effect to get like that rolling thunder sound and then very cool. You love that kind of stuff, uh, Rick is saying. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm not dissing on you. I'm just, usually it's not my type of thing. I always find they kind of do a hokey version of stuff, the ones that I tend to catch. But that one was, uh, that one was something else. I mean, impressive is an understatement of the century. Black Label Society, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't have his electric guitar out now. It's an acoustic guitar. <laughs> It's really hard to get, uh, really hard. it's really, it has to be really great to be effective. It's 100%. That's right. More than any band playing something, when it's not done that way, acapella, it's got to be bang on. And uh, otherwise, yeah, it's a no dice. I agree with you. Very true. Zach is awesome. Zach is the guy. He was my guitar player. He was the guy that I wanted to be growing up and that. I met him one time. It was a really horrible scene. But yeah, he was always. But to the, my favorite Ozzy song was Zach Will Always Be Miracle Man. He's the first one he ever came out with like that. Wow, wow. Those bends. Like, and he uses those friggin' like 10 gauge strings. And he's up like two octaves. It's just all finger work. I'm a big guy from the 80s. I always liked the whammy stuff, you know. I've always been like a huge, my, probably my favorite guitarist of the whole 80s was uh, Vito Brada from White Lion. But and actually, I read, if you go on Vito Brada's uh, Wikipedia site, uh, the quotes that, you know, when they say, like, what other artists think of them, uh, Zach Wilde has said that uh, that's his favorite tapping guitarist of all time. He is Vito Brada, so. Full circle. The two that I, that I like the most that I never thought would have any time for each other actually do truly respect each other. Yeah, Zach is a monster on guitar, a real monster. Yeah. Oh, you're not, you don't have to apologize for anything. Yeah, yeah. In, in the complete polar opposite of apologize. <laughs> well, I guess it's that time, eh? I mean, Tomorrow the kids will be up early, and tomorrow's our day off. So we tomorrow's go. Father's Day. Yeah. Uh, so for those of you who are fathers, uh, happy Father's Day. Yeah. And for those of you uh, who uh, have their daddies uh, up close, so it has been tomorrow. I wait for the call. And for those of you who are missing theirs tomorrow, uh, big hugs and kisses from us. Uh, always remember are in your hearts. Um, enjoy your Sunday. Yeah. Thank you guys for choosing to spend your time with us tonight. Glad you enjoyed it. It was an amazing time with Ken and Jane. Yes. That was the perfect way to have a Saturday leading into Father's Day. Yes, it really that's was. so true. Was and we're going to see you on Monday with uh, three friends and brewing their own beer happy, at 8 p.m. Happy Father's Day to you, Doodles by Doug. Happy birthday, happy Father's Day to all of you who have kids. And you know what? Happy Father's Day to all the guys out there. It's not just about being having kids for Father's Day. It's about being good to everybody. Yeah. And Steph, yeah. you still have your wrench. My goodness. Yes. That's never going to be away. <laughs> see, that's right. That's there for life. Your life for <laughs> Cheryl, thank you so much. That's so much kind of you. Really appreciate it. And have a great day tomorrow. Spend it with your loved ones. Spoil yourselves. And uh, we'll be back Monday night, like Zinni said. With uh, three friends with... brewing their own beer. Yep, it's going to be cool. Again, thank you so much. And you guys, have an awesome night. Have an awesome day tomorrow. Take care. Bye, guys. <laughs>